Welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson. And today, we are in the studio with the queen. All right? Ryan Ketchens is in here. And we are about to get to it. The impact, y'all, of sex culture with Queen Afua. So stay tuned. Let's get to it. Welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, my co-host, Ryan Ketchens. I can already tell, man. It's going to be a powerful one right here. You didn't watch too. Like that. Right. <laughs> I just remember when I was a child, my mom. To get that white man's option out of his <laughs> pursuit, me, I ran. I want him, don't care. This is dope. You need to have a person. There you go. Is this Miss Dottie now? Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is how you start a Monday here. We're hardly initiated at 8 p.m. And we're doing it extra special today because I already told the queen we've been working on this now for about a year. Amazing. And it has finally happened. Wow. Because y'all, round of applause because we finally got Queen Afua in the studio with hardly initiated here today. Queen, how you feeling tonight? I feel excellent. Thank you very much. <sighs> Man, you look great. Thank you. Yeah. But I got dressed up for you. I appreciate that. That's what we love. <laughs> I love that. Get ladies, get dressed up for the man, all right? <laughs> you know, it's a blessing to have you. I already told you before you came in here. I don't know if, if you guys don't know. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and introduce you. I'm just assuming everybody know because this is one of the most powerful healers of our generation. Over 40 years putting in work healing our community our ladies the best-selling author new york Times is a new york times bestseller new york, yes, look, it is. guys new york times bestseller i have the book here i told her when i first bought it i bought four copies for my one for myself <laughs> and three for the uh, uh the amazing all I, I just knew i wanted to give it to the women in my life mm -hmm. ryan stole one i had to he he had to and and, and i'm happy he did and you've also been one of the just most well-respected, holistic um, health practitioners and wellness coaches in the space and in the community. And it's a blessing uh, mm -hmm. to have you here because me, I'm on, I feel like I'm on the more holistic, holistic end mm -hmm. as well of how I like to heal and just yes. approach the world personally. Mm -hmm. I'm currently on a fruit and veggie fast right okay. now. For I how mean, long? I'm doing 23 days. Ooh, you have a great mission. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's, the, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's going to give done. the best results. <sighs> so you're right in time. <laughs> you are right in time. But I want to give you a bit of insight about us too, please. Um, you know, because as hardly initiated, the way we even came up with the name of the platform mm -hmm. um, is because me and Ryan went on our own personal growth journeys. Mm -hmm. Still on it. Uh, sure. Still it's on. Life. It's a way of life. Mm -hmm. It is a way of life. Mm -hmm. Um, we had a successful business. Mm -hmm. We were getting a bit unfulfilled by the business, started going into, you know, really developing as men. Mm -hmm. And through our studies, we just saw that as a generation, we don't have the best rites of passage. We don't have the best initiation processes mm -hmm. for our young men, yes. nor our young women. And we realized we are a generation of hardly initiated men and women. Ooh. And it's a blessing because not only have you been a woman to create a rite of passage, for women which we're gonna get to mm -hmm. um but you've done a ton of other great things and put out so much great work so you guys are in for a treat today we're gonna get to it but i first gotta show some love to my episode sponsor ryan let the people know who is sponsoring this episode today so guys most people have a hard time initiating and having those very deep conversations on those first few days so this is the thing tyshawn and i have put the formula together we have created over 100 open-ended questions to really take true chemistry to the next level and this is the thing guys is valuable if you're on a date it's valuable if you want to play with friends especially if you want to get one of those game nights popped off so please click the link below in the description and also in the chat and get your hard and love cards today i love that first of all my mom in the chat over here embarrassing me to my machine get a book first of all i think ryan stole your book all right ray got a book all right my I'm sister Listen, got a book i'm sorry missy see the thing is i seen that sacred you know say because you know men you know we want a good woman you know, yes. so when I seen Sacred Woman, right, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, this might be something I need to 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 look for. Then I opened the book and I was like, oh, oh man, this some hard work. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, 
But I, I think most of us, I think most of us are, you know, typically in a place where we got a lot of the, the good things going on, the things that mm-hmm. society or maybe our parents have told us these are the things you should acquire. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a good education. Maybe that's a wife or a husband and a family. But it seemed to me, especially with Tyshawn's describing our personal journeys, it was something that was missing that I couldn't quite figure out. It's funny because I spoke to one of your SWs prior to the show, uh, Larray, right? And um, sacred women, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Miss LeRae. And she mm-hmm. pretty much detailed exactly how I was feeling at one point, where you don't mm-hmm. really know exactly what it is. You mm-hmm. just know it's something that you're missing. Yeah. So if you could tell us, what do you, how do you see the benefit of a rites of passage? Why is it important? Well, a rites of passage is a roadmap. It's a roadmap to your culture. It tells you who you are, what you are, how to be in community, how to build, how to create finance. It's all about living. If you do not have a rites of passage, then you are walking blind. Mm. Because we have been stolen. Land, culture, traditions, our medicine, our spiritual path, everything has been stolen. And as a result, we are taking on someone else's culture. And that culture is not productive to us and what we need. And that is why we are suffering. A rites of passage is necessary to come from childhood to adulthood. That is both for women and men. And that's why so many um, families are not in sync and so many broken homes because we don't have a rites of passage. And as a result, our children don't have their parents. They have the mother, the single parent syndrome. Uh, you know, and that is destroying the family. So in order to really build, you have to have the women have to go to the women and learn how to be women. Mm. And the men have to go to the men and learn what it is to be a man within family. Because without a family, you will perish. You have to build from a family base. So in writing Sacred Women, for example, I couldn't stop with Sacred Women. Because the men, when I would go out with sacred women for years, they would say, well, what about us? Huh. <laughs> you know, like Michael Jackson, what about us? Right. <laughs> and so um, I said, well, I'm not supposed to write a book for men. But they said, well, if you wrote this type of book or channeled it for the women, we want to hear from you, your perspective. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, I can bring my perspective. And then my sons chimed in, Supernova Slam. And Ali and Michi, they said, well, Ma, you've helped to raise so many young men in the community. And as a result, we came out really powerful. So you can write this book. You can use us as an example. And many of the young men have came to our home over the years. Our home was that, that, that house in the community that everyone came to, to grow and to heal, both women and men. So I went back to nature. I went back to our culture. And I start to study the first um, text on spirituality. That text is the Perch and Ruin Gear. And one of my master teachers was my husband that I was married to for 19 years. Wow. Yes, and no Angarasama Sepata. And I call him the High Lali Dhamma of Kam. And he walked, and he still walks the path of a master teacher. So between me being a healer for um, 20 years before we came together, and we came together and we really exchanged knowledge. And that is what this work is based on, masculine and feminine principles coming in. So he had so much knowledge, but he would tell me often, well, just look at the glyphs. The glyphs will talk to you. And because I've been fasting and cleansing for so long, I can look at a glyph with the knowledge and then decipher what, is the, what are the ancestors telling us on our return back to our power, our return back to ourselves. If we do not have a rites of passage, we have no power. Mm. That is really the bottom line. You know, it's interesting because I think, you know, going, we've gone several generations now yeah. without a rites of passage. Mm-hmm. You know, we've gone several generations with broken homes. Yeah. And what we see now mm-hmm. is just the chaos of not having structure for so long. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're dealing with a lot of the consequences of that today. And that actually creates a lot of the conversations that we typically have because sex is also a conversation that we frequently have because I think sex is a a very misused and Mm -hmm. misunderstood, 
you know, practice, mm -hmm. especially in our culture. Yeah. And it can cause a ton of trauma, yeah. you know, just long term and how we approach relationships and, you know, men and women moving forward. So I want to get your perspective on this because I've been waiting for you in particular to have this conversation mm -hmm. because, you know, we've had some conversations prior, mm -hmm. um, you know, from uh, different men and women that we, I have a ton of respect for, but I'm interested to know your perspective on how sex or what spiritual impact mm -hmm. does sex, because I know you heal women. Let's talk specifically right now about them. What spiritual impact does sex have on a woman? Mm-hmm. Well, first we should take out the word sex and then say love, which is myrrh. It takes, myrrh in our ancient tradition means work. It takes work, divine works, to come together. If we come together haphazardly, then what we are having is sex. And sex turns into war. Sex turns into violence. Sex turns into um, animosity and divide and broken homes and broken things. That's what sex does. It doesn't have a soul. It doesn't, it can eat up someone alive and throw and spit them out. Mm. So if we love, that means we're working for a purpose. So then when you come together sexually, which is called sexually, when you come together to mur, to love, then you come together to build. If you come together to build, then your, your intercourse, your connectivity creates masterful works. Mm. So you have to prepare to have masterful works. You can't just have random intercourse. What are you intercoursing with? Who are you intercoursing with? What are they thinking? What are, what's, what's their history? Are they angry at women? Are they angry at their mothers? Are they angry at their fathers? Are they um, feeling um, inept? What is going on? So you can't just lay with someone and then expect to have a whole life because you're going to pick up who they are and you're gonna become who they are. Mm. You're gonna exchange energy. So you have to look at that person and say, am I willing to be them, a Ooh. part of them? Ooh, that's a real commitment. That's wow. a, de a deep commitment. And you can see it because of the child that the two, because many women are gonna conceive because of that intercourse, that connection. And then they end up saying, well, I don't really, why, I don't wanna have the baby. I don't wanna be this man, or I don't wanna be this woman. But you made the biggest commitment, which is to enter each, into each other's lives, into each other's canal, into each other's consciousness. So what are we merging with? Do you know if the person is um, a serial killer? <laughs> Do you know if that person is an abuser? Do you know if that person is um, uh, you know, violent? Whatever the state is, because that is going to be the true sexual connection. So first of all, you said something I... That's a question. First of yeah. all, a question. Am I willing to be this person? Mm -hmm. Is a thought you should have before having sex with someone yeah. because of the energy exchange. It's an energy, that's, that's bottom line. It's an energy exchange. So you have to actually study who are their family? What is their purpose? What is their mission? What can we build together? Because what happens, if you don't check those questions, you are going to be a casualty of war. Mm. And then you're going to be willing to fight that same one that you said you loved. It's going to be a violent relationship. And guess who will dis be destroyed in the middle of it? The child. The light that comes in. Or you leave the relationship, but you leave with the person's doubt, fear, sickness. It's like taking alcohol taking drugs and saying there's not going to be any repercussions. It's going to be repercussions for that intercourse that you have. So random intercourse is the danger to the soul. And then once you carry that in, that, that person can stay with you for a lifetime. And you're just walking around with that person in your attitude, in your thoughts, in your way. And then you keep attracting the same person. Mm -hmm. Because you never detox, you never cleanse from the relationship, you never learned from the relationship, so then you keep creating the next intercourse and the next, and it's like having a steak and then a hamburger and then french fries. It's like you keep building up this sickness and this disease, and that is our, the destruction of our people. But it came from somewhere, it's so a Willie Lynch, in his 400 years of child slavery, because we were never stolen to create life. 
we were stolen to be slaves. And so the, what kind of sexual act went on for 400 years? You know, and things are passed down through the DNA. It didn't just happen. Who you are is not just where you are. You are your great, 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 great grandmother and your great, 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 great grandfather. So you bring that into the equation now. What were they? I just found um, out last year that my great, great, great grandfather, he was a breeder from wow. Louisiana. Wow. Right. And he bred many, many children. That's what he was. So there's something in my family. I have to be very conscious, but, we, but that happened to all of our families. Right. That was, was the norm. That, and there was also, like, they had uh, cotton factory, cotton plantations. There were also breeding plantations that was just for breeding. So you didn't have to know the person. All he had to be as strong, like my great-great-grandfather was strong and big, and that's what they wanted. They wanted someone to be, babies to come out strong and big. So where was the family then? There's no family. You just conceive. You just have sex. And then the men are being raped. They don't talk about that. The women are being raped. So this, is, this system right now is the end result of that. Mm. When I, I worked with the sister, um, Stephanie McGraw in Harlem, and she spoke about, well, she's been doing um, stopping domestic violence in the home. Domestic violence is not just a feminine thing. It's not a masculine thing. It's a consciousness. And that means that you were raised in a violent environment. And, the, and more than likely, the sex, the intercourse between your mother and father, if you're in that realm, it's because that was a violent act to them. Mm. And you were conceived in a violent state of being. And then that violent state, then you grow up as a child, and then you hear violence in the home. And then you grow up as a teenager, and you attract violence in your relationship. And then you have intercourse, and you seek out your own level. It's like, what is seeks its own level? Well, you seek out yourself. And yourself is violent, or yourself is at peace. Just like there. So in, in that process, my daughter had me to connect with um, Stephanie McGraw. I've been with her for years. She's a sacred woman. And she's a CEO of um, Stopping the Violence in Harlem. And I called her at a moment where she said, I'm on the floor right now. Because her husband, he, uh, first he killed his wife, mm. and then he killed his two-year-old, and then his four-year-old. Wow. What level of violence was in his soul? And what were they creating? They did not have a rite of passage. There was no elders helping them enough because the elders were in pain. And you look at the 400 years of slavery, it's still with us. That's why we can't have whole families. Yeah. You know, our families are struggling. Most of our children are coming into this world without a father in the home. So then if there's no father in the home, then what daughters do we have? And what men do we have? So we have, you know, the, this whole system that's based on grabbing the next relationship. First, you have to grab yourself. You have to get with yourself. And that's where the self-transformation comes in. That's where Heal Thyself, the first book I channeled about 40 years ago, I had to learn how to heal myself because I attracted a violent relationship. Mm. And I realized that if I stayed in this relationship, that my children would be, would be they would not survive. It was so intense that my daughter, she was three years old, and she told me, Mom, let's go to grandmother's. She wanted to get with my own father. At three, she could see it. Wow. She, I, and you think you're hiding it. So women think, well, the children don't see it. They feel everything. They see everything. They're made of you. Yeah. So you hiding nothing. So it, the healing of the self. So I had to go on my own healing quest. I had to heal myself. And I was already, I started this as a teenager. I started when I was 16, 17 years of age, holistic healing. Wow. But it takes years to, to really purge wow. lifetimes. I'm not only purging my own being, but I'm purging my mother's mother, mother, and father's father's father. And so that takes a deep matter of work. Like you talked about your fasting and your cleansing now. You're not just cleaning yourself up. You're cleaning out your children. Mm. You're cleaning out your future mate or your present mate right now. You're healing them 
through your own frequency. My work is working with frequency. The higher the frequency, the greater the healing. The lower the frequency, the more devastation of our community, of ourselves. So healing is it, I call it African natural lifestyle. One thing that I, got, that I gathered that all healing and, and channeling the sacred woman's book, I started to start, so, so where did um, herbs begin? African from, from, from the motherland. Where did astrology begin? Where did color therapy? And so this is rhythm I do. If you can just jo join me in this, whatever I say, because this, this is called the reclaiming. You say African natural lifestyle. Okay. Okay. Whatever I say, what you going to say? African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. And it's important to do that because otherwise you feel like a second class citizen. This, then this age, the, wellness is a trillion dollar business. Why are we the sickest people? There's a problem there. And, that is, and wellness is our culture. Holistic health is our culture. And in studying and researching the beginning of all natural healing started in the motherland of Kemet, well, we have to go back to ourselves to recover. That's where the rites of passage comes in. So whatever I say, didn't, the holistic health didn't start in this era. It started in, from antiquity. You ready? Yes. Okay. Reiki. African, African natural, natural lifestyle. Oh, yeah. So you pointed at him. I African know. natural lifestyle. <laughs> African natural lifestyle. Uh -huh. From on a third grade level, right? <laughs> right. Come on. We, we gonna get better, y'all. Okay. It takes time. It takes time. <laughs> Yoga. African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Astrology. African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Polarity. African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Now put some rhythm to it. Color therapy. African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Astrology. African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Hydrotherapy. <laughs> African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Polarity. African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Energy work. African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Elemental healing. African, African natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Air, fire, water, earth. African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Beauty. African, African natural, natural lifestyle. lifestyle. Beauty. Health. African, African natural lifestyle. lifestyle. It's all African, African natural lifestyle. lifestyle. So then we have to go into natural lifestyle to reclaim ourselves back so that we're not beastly to each other. Mm. That it's not about the breasts and the butt because now all of the women are getting breast implants and mm -hmm. butt implants and... What's your thoughts on that? Well, I'm praying for our daughters. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. But they're doing it because they want a man and they think that's what they have. That they feel that's all that they have and that the men are cultivated for that. So the men are looking at women on the lowest frequency. They're not looking at a whole woman. They're looking at a part of a woman. And they're looking at just the physicality, but it's not her real body. So she's taking on an image that's not her real self. And that is the devastation of our people. Mm. We're taking on falsehood of who we really are. We are brilliant. We are the kings and queens, the mothers and fathers of civilization. So we have lowered ourselves because, but what, my father's the Garveyite, and my father told me that the way for the black man and black woman, African man, African woman, to really resolve and to unif is to unify, and that's a Marcus Garvey uh, concept is to unify, and why we were able to be stolen because we were not unified. It's my tribe against your tribe, and that is what Willie Lynch did the same thing. Continue. So I know how to keep. These folks um, are serving us for over a thousand years. And this is how he did it. It's dark skin against light skin. It's kinky hair against straight. It's male against female. It's young against old. And that divide is our destruction. We have to unify. The reason why this book is the number one seller, one of the reasons why, well, I didn't write it. I channeled it. And we all have a channel, and that channel is a, a perfect channel when you open yourself up to divine, sacred, healing channel. So in the channel, we, right as the closing of the book, because I, I, I had to get up for seven years at 4 o'clock in the morning when your melanin pours out of you and you can see clearly what you are to do. And one of the things, I was about to close the book, and a circle showed up. Now, this circle is really important because that's a symbol. 
Symbols are lang- is a language, and we function by symbols, but we also function by letters. And the symbol is what Target's based on. That's what can be gives all our money. It's a circle. <laughs> wow. And in the middle, it's a dot. And that represents power. When we stay in circle as a people, we stay in power. In our, if we have a strong circle, then we're not divided. So that means if you have real estate and you have communication and then you have food as medicine and you're doing the, you know, the farming and someone else, you know, if we stay in circle, then we realize that we have everything we need within the circle. It's when we come out of our circle, but we don't, we, we don't have a circle. We don't. And we are so quick to say, I don't want to work with our people for this or that reason. I, I don't find it in Atlanta, though. Mm. I think we come to Atlanta to work together. I, I, I believe that. Because I feel a circle in here. I mean, from the time my brother opened the you know, door and, and brought me here, and then I, feel, I, I picked up, I said, okay, this is a strong circle of power yes. and unity, and that's why you're successful. Thank you so right? much. Right, and then you that heal on top of it, and because I, you know, you pick up, you heal on top of it, so the circle cannot be broken. Somebody mm-hmm. cannot come in and separate you, because you've done so much healing and transformational work. It has built your circle. So inside of Sacred Woman, there is a circle, and then there's a pyramid. The circle is a feminine principle. The masculine side of it is a pyramid. So it's everything's nature's based on masculine and feminine. The balance. But what this circle does for the women, and it's the same circle for Man Heal Thyself with my son Supernova, who's leading uh, Man Heal Thyself, um, is that it's sacred Muslim women, sacred Hare Krishna women, sacred Hebrew Israelite women, sacred Yoruba women. And it's all of the different houses that we find a reason not to connect. Mm. When we don't connect, then we are broken. When we don't connect, then we, then we have to go to other people for everything we need, as opposed to be self-sustainable. Now, now let me ask you this, because I, I think that's a good place to pause. Because we've had a lot of, um, we have, I mean, we have a ton of Christian pastors that come on the platform. Some of my favorite conversations to have, very wise men. Um, a couple other, you know, we've had Dr. Cobb on the platform. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had a lot of incredible um, African intellectuals um, from a, the different diaspora. And, and I want to ask you this from you, because as a healer, we have a following now. We've amassed a following of different spiritual backgrounds and beliefs. Yeah. And a lot of times somebody, if you on the Christian side, mm-hmm. you feel like I can't learn what you teaching me over there. Right. Yeah. If I'm a Muslim, I can't really learn and rock with those Christians over there because I have to stay over here. Can you, is the rites of passage mm-hmm. the same for women of different spiritual backgrounds? Can all women go through the same rites of passage and get, and get the same revelation? There's a, this is, um, a, think of this as a tree. The tree, in order for it to grow, it has to have roots. It has to have a beginning. If you don't have your root, you don't have the tree. The tree will die. We have to know our beginnings. When we don't know our beginnings, then we are not going to be empowered. So it's extraordinary that all the different tribes, they come into sacred woman because I don't personally, I, I was guided on how to teach this mm-hmm. spiritually. I don't fight, have them fight one against the, the other. They will all come to some very clear conclusions that they are the mothers and fathers of civilization. Mm-hmm. Being the mothers and fathers of civilization, there were laws that was given to us. One of the laws that's common ground that the Ten Commandments comes out of is the 42 laws of Ma'at. Why Ma'at? A whole nation was based on the principle. Well, the so-called United States races itself, so, so, so it says, in the spirit of Ma'at, but it doesn't. It's no justice while there's no peace, right? And so what is Ma'at that a whole nation would be based on? The most mystical symbol, it's a scale. Yeah. On one side of the scale, there's your heart. On the other side of the scale, there's a feather. You have to, it's like a riddle. You have to figure out, how do I keep my heart as light as a feather (laughs) in a world that is destroying us? Mm. Frequency. We have to go to higher frequency. The scale starts at the bottom. It's like a, it's structured as a pyramid. 
You have to, I climbed the pyramids. You have to climb the pyramids of Ma'at. Ma'at is the most balanced. Holistic health is based on the principle of Ma'at, that every day you will be judged upon what you did the day before or the last breath. So these are, these are common conscious thoughts that all the houses that come into the space can relate to. Because it's not, we're not, we don't practice the gods and goddesses as told to us that would separate us. We know there's one most high that's indwelling. And that's what the Christian women say, oh, I asked them one question. Where is God within? Okay, so we're on the same plane. <laughs> <laughs> so if the most high is within, then how do you get to God? Mm. Ola Dumare, Jah, Jehovah. Well, there's some techniques you have to do. Meditate. Mm -hmm. What's common or religion? Fast and pray in your own way. And you will reach that inter God divine consciousness where every answer emanates. Every question that you have, the answer is already there. You just have to practice going within. And when I go through the gateways and they start to say, wait a minute, Newt represents the Sky Mother. Newt is the universal principle. And Newt, and you see the art. If you start to study ancient art, the, less, the lessons and the messages was in the art. So whether it be a Muslim or a Christian, when I explain that that principle is overarching and we're bringing in the spirit of Newt, we're bringing heaven down to earth in the women. So when you bring heaven down to earth through the women, then the women's frequency elevates and then the men's frequency elevates and then the men are drawn to women who are sacred, mm. women who are conscious, women who are awake, women who have respect for themselves, women who know how to heal. If you have a sacred woman in your life, you are the most blessed man. I agree with that. Because I don't care what your issue is. She knows if you have high blood pressure, diabetes, a headache, a bad attitude, she knows what bath, what juice, what herb, <laughs> what color to give you so you could be in your divine rights, mind, right, right consciousness. Right. Mm -hmm. And that it helps to keep the family in a place of my aunt. You know what? So look, let's go here, too, because one of the biggest things I know you teach and help and heal us on mm -hmm. is in the conversation of womb healing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And. I'm going to be honest, I guess, I'm, I guess it's like a confession because I, I've been a part of some things. When I think about the, this, a lot of the decisions I made now, it, it's actually, it's, I'm disgusted by it because I'm not going to lie. I have financed some abortions. Mm -hmm. I have bought some plan B pills, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I'm at a place now where I'm wrapping my mind around thinking and wanting a family. And even when I think about that, I'm just, it, it just bothers me to even think that the woman that I might be, you know, looking to deal with may have also had that happen to her body. Because now I'm thinking about, oof, what is this like, wh what's, she, what, what's going on? Like, what's going on in your womb? Mm. Right? Because I understand how destructive those things are. I want to ask you, what's the impact? Mm. Because I'm going to be honest, it's way more normal than we talk about. We don't really have these conversations, but... We getting abortions and plan B pills. I'm talking about that. That's becoming a regular part of some people's lifestyles mm -hmm. at this point. But on a physical and spiritual level, how does that impact a woman's body? Well, it's literally you're ripping the woman's womb to pieces before she even conceives the fact that you are having intercourse with someone that you're not going to be committed to that you're not gonna be able to grow a family. If you don't have a family, you really um, avoid of energy. Whether you have a blood family or an extended family, family is the sustainability of a people, of a nation. So without a family, we're homeless. Mm -hmm. Mentally, emotionally, and psychologically homeless. So before we even conceive, we have to heal ourselves because that abortion was gonna happen before you had intercourse, because you were not really serious. And so that person that you're in, integrating with, you're becoming that lower self, and it starts to eat away at your soul. So by the time that you conceive, and then you realize, I don't want to be this person, but you didn't want to be that person anyway. 
You were just running through them. Uh-huh. And when you run through something, it's, like, it's called karma. What goes around comes around. So you crush yourself just in time. What's your age? I just turned 31 in February. Wow, it's so good. So you, you'll be okay. You'll make it. So when you wake up, the earlier that you can wake up, the better, because it is a karmic thing when you take life. When you take your own life, when you abuse yourself, when you abuse a woman, when you abuse her womb, and all you want to do is just have sex. But the sex is a good feeling, but that feeling can kill you, you mm. know? And, and so many, you know, so there's so much to having intercourse, but when you take the, you know, it's, it's, I always want to say that women have to think for themselves first. We have to take care of ourselves first because we already know that this relationship isn't going anywhere. But you just want someone to hold you. You want someone to mm-hmm. caress you. You want someone to want to be with you. And so you're willing to sacrifice. You're willing to say, well, even if I'm not going to have this person grow with me, I'll have a temporary love. And that's an empty relationship. And so you conceive, and then you want to empty yourself back out again because it's a frequency. So it's not for me to really judge someone if they feel this is something I need to do because I can't afford it. But you knew you couldn't afford it when you start. But if that's, see, that's when you have, it's on a drug. Sex is a drug. Right. Yes. And you got to have it. And you got to have it because you want the next hit. And then you hit the next womb, and she hits you, and you hit each other, and then you beat each other. And so then you bring her, then you conceive. And what will you do? You'll beat the baby before the baby comes. Mm. So you take the baby out because you've been taken out already. So the, the, the life is already an extension of yourself. So when you take the life from yourself, you take the life from yourself. And that's why so many are so empty, because they keep looking for a substantial relationship. And it comes out empty. So the womb becomes empty. And often women, they've had so many. I remember one woman, she had 11 abortions. Wow. You said she had 11 abortions. 11 abortions. It was the same thing as taking the pill and just saying, okay, I'm I'm, I'm with this one, I'm with that one, I'm with this one, I'm with that one. That's nothing but a state of confusion and pain. And that baby that is conceived is actually the same energy. Because, you know, we look at babies as, you know, this life that just came, but that baby had lifetimes before that that soul came into your body. Mm. You and that baby or that soul, that returning ancestor, are really one. So when you take the baby out in in such an abusive or um, a violent way, then so the womb is impacted. And then the woman is feeling broken or maybe not. She may not feel anything. She may have numbed out herself because where did it start that she just can have one abortion after the next? It started in her family or a lack of family. She didn't have a connection with her father, the mother, stolen people. So abortion is becoming normal. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're taking on someone else's way and someone else's culture. But if you take more time now to really raise your vibration, your frequency enough, to have someone to truly love you and who will grow with you and build. Men live longer when they have a healthy mate. Mm. You know, they live longer and they ha- they're more sustainable. The men who don't have healthy mates, they die out quickly. When about 45 years old, well, the impotency begins. All that sex, that no love, you become impotent by the time you're 40. You need, you know, you're suffering from erectile dysfunction. You pay a price for that. Yeah. You know, and then by the time you're 45, you have diabetes and high blood pressure. And then by the time you're 50, your fingers are not working and the toes are being cut off. And, you know, it's the diabetic condition set in. And I know because when, by the time the women survive, you could have our breast removed, take a uterus out, a knee replacement, a hip replacement, yeah. we're still walking. Yeah. Because we communicate with each other. Men do not talk to each other. Men don't talk to them about their intimate. They may talk about sports, but they don't really talk about their heart and what they're going through. They don't, but the women, because it's the nature of women to communicate, we'll communicate so we'll live longer. So our men, they become more like couch potatoes and they sit back and they don't communicate, they don't express, and then they die out because they're not communicating, not with themselves, not with their relationships, 
And so when you talk about abortion, it's just uh, many things happen before you even get to the abortion that was not working, that was not functional. So we end up having most come to me. By the time they get to me, they've had several abortions, several surgeries, um, bouts of depression and mood swings. They want to get to themselves. Themselves is magnificent. We are a royal people. And then we don't have to get into relationships that are not going anywhere because we know our value is a very high level as a people, but we're not necessarily willing to take the time to heal. It takes time to heal and reconnect. And then you will have a relationship that will be mentally stimulating, emotionally charging, financially building. You build from something substantial because you're substantial. And you've taken time to study and the rites of passage, it brings you in full circle because in that way, then you're looking for a healthy mate. Can, could you give us some, some detail? Because, you know, a, a woman, or a man goes through this, and, and I'm assuming is the, the man at the end of the rites of passage, is that a sacred man? He is a sacred man. Okay. He is a man on his, in his right mind. Okay. And what I've noticed that the women, they actually pleaded, they plead for their men to take the, the, the training. Because some of the women are ready to say, I'm healing myself. I'm getting better. I'm not angry anymore. And all of a sudden, they know they have to do some level of healing with their mate or there won't be a relationship. Mm. And so many of the men now take man heal thyself only because the women are demanding they are willing to let go of the men if the men are that sick. You know, and so it is really, the, the, it has to be a balance. And we've come to our lowest level now, and all we can do is rise up. And the rites of passage is something that is necessary for us to, to, to thrive, to grow, to live, and, and not to just live a life of pain and sorrow. And so what is the, the by the way, we're gonna have a we're gonna get to the initiation hotline really quickly, guys. If you want us to read your comments here on the episode, send your super chats in so we can go ahead and read that. We just hit over a thousand people watching live in the room. So go ahead and hit that like button so we can continue to grow the room as we move closer into this hotline where we bring you guys into the conversation. But I think you had a, a question, Ryan. Yeah, so I'm getting ready to drop the link right now. But what I'm trying to figure out is, you know, the sacred woman, the sacred man, what does that final product look like? Not to say that, mm -hmm. you know, once you complete the rites of, of passage that you no longer continue to develop. But what does the, the, the final product look like? What does he, she look like? Right. They look, it's a, it's a number of things, for example. One of the things is they start to use the word as medicine. Words cannot be just spoken frivolously. What you say is what you create. The, the word from our ancestors says hekau. So everything you say is what you're creating. So now you have someone who is sticking to the word. Back in the day, we'd say word is bond. Mm. You can trust my word. When you're weak, your word is weak. And so what you say will be creative to your demise. So one of the qualities is to use words as power. Mm. Another quality is to use food as medicine, right? So the food is medicine now. So everything you eat is creating the body that you have or you want or you desire. And so we are over, we're medicated on drugs. And if anybody who's taking their medication, you could continue taking your medication, but once you go through man heal thyself and sacred woman, then you start to use your cucumbers for your kidneys because the dialysis centers are expanding. Oh it's like goodness. you got the fast food here and dialysis um, or, uh, depart, you know, uh, companies there. And then you have the sick people in the community and the food deserts. It's like it all works together, yeah. yep. right? So when you have that as a way of life, then you're in trouble. So then when you think, okay, food is medicine, everything I eat, our grandparents at least got that. Even, there, was, there was no back to Eden when they were stolen and brought here. They were talking to the plants. They was talking to the soil. They used the clay for the pain. They used the pot liquor as, a, as like a, a green juice. So we were always striving. We used the, the herbs as our medicine. So we have to actually get back to nature, we have to get back to ourselves. So that's, that's a basic principle. Another principle in, in the working is meshkinet. Everyone has to find their purpose. If you don't find your purpose, you'll never be satisfied. 
You always come up empty. You can have all the money in the world, but if you do not know why you're here and how you're to manifest or manifest your life, then again, you're gonna come down, you're gonna come out empty. So you have to find your purpose and that's birthing and that's mesh connect. Another quality is, at least in the women, is check your inner child. That five-year-old, that seven-year-old, oftentimes when someone's experiencing pain in their life, they can go back to the, when pain began. What age were you? Mm. Was your mother and father fighting? Was, um, did, you know, was there slamming and yelling? Was there fighting? Was there drugs around you as a child? What was happening to you as a child? It keeps creating itself. So that particular gateway is Hetheru, finding the inner child and going back to that inner child to where you left that child and build that child back up. Because if you don't build that child back up, you have an adult who's still a child, a ch an adult who hasn't really fully grown. And if you haven't fully grown, then you're not whole for yourself and for your children, for your family, for your community. So these are principles that we have to take on. And once you learn these African healing principles, then you begin to walk upright again. This is a hell of a person. So you you fully conscious of what's coming out and what's going in. Mm -hmm. You are purpose driven and mm -hmm. focused and committed. Mm -hmm. And I think the last one was, I guess you have the willingness and commitment to really battle the demons that are within you. Yeah, well, the demons are only there because we were divided. Mm. So the best way to get back, to get the demons out in that way, is to unify with yourself. If your heart is not unified with your body, you have a heart attack. If your mind is not unified in, in wholeness, then you have depression. If your nervous system is, is, is not fortified, then you are weakened. So you actually have to take your unity from inside first. That's when you cleanse and you detox. Because all the time we want to say, well, I want my family to change. I want my family to heal. But it's not really your family that has to heal. You have to heal. If mm. you heal yourself, then your frequency starts to pour out of you. Your auric field starts to grow. And just thinking of your family's wellness and being the living example, your family will begin to come into alignment. So it's not, it's not like you have to convince them, because really the people in your family are yourself. They're an extension of yourself. They are the <laughs> arms and the legs of who you are. And most people who start to change, they feel like, that they shouldn't be called this, but the black sheep of the family. Well, that one is the most enlightened one. Mm. That is the one that feels most isolated. The family doesn't get them. I'm always doing something. The family doesn't support me. Well, that's the one who has the courage and to be able to begin to walk their truth. And they are the ones who really shift the family's whole direction. And, when, and if they can hold on to that vision of a whole person, the family will eventually come into alignment with them. Mm -hmm. Man, let me tell you, I understood. We got Queen of Fuwa here in the studio today. Ryan went ahead and he recently dropped the link for you guys to actually join the conversation so you actually can come backstage as you know. The initiation hotline is officially here. The hotline, please. You guys can go ahead and click that, put your name, you'll go backstage. Be patient, because we'll let you up. We're still having a conversation, so we'll let you up. I want any questions that you have for the queen while she's in the studio, you guys can come up in here and bring it to us here today, because we're going deep. In fact, I wanted to keep it here, too, because another thing, too, and, and it's, it's crazy how, you know, as a man, too, we have our transitional phases of life, and I'm moving to, you know, my, my real you know, king phase of life where I want to mm -hmm. partner, I want to expand, I want to, I want to do these things. And, and, and this is still a very new phase of my life. And well, I'm, I'm seeing you things differently. Place? You know, I think a lot of the inputs, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest, man, our platform has had a huge impact okay. on how I see the world and, mm -hmm. you know, how I appreciate, um, you know, family, marriage, mm -hmm. um, how I appreciate um, uh, the responsibility Mm -hmm. that comes with that next level mm -hmm. and also just having a bit of you know f just lacking the fulfillment in a lot of the activities that i used to um enjoy mm -hmm. you know i used to enjoy you know spending a few nights a week with a young lady and you know they started to become uh, uh i started to come to a place where i would be in that environment and i would like it way less mm -hmm. i would even find myself i told i told ryan like 
when you live in that savage life where you know it's you in that sex life for the most mm-hmm. part it's even certain conversations you want to stay away from i found myself queen mm-hmm. having conversations where i'm coaching this woman up about her past and <laughs> we going into conversations that ain't got nothing to do with sex like it's like why are we talking about this right now because but you're i'm growing. just changing you're growing like i'm i'm starting to see that this mm-hmm. young woman who traditionally if i just wanted to have sex with is a, mm-hmm. is, a is a great target to have sex with but she's hurt yeah and, she's and you said with target a, so right. that's an attack. Right. She's a great target, somebody I can attack. 100%. That's the savageness. It, it is the yeah. savageness. But and it's, it's, it's a reality. savage culture when yeah. you out there just casually mm-hmm. having sex with people, you just out there to take. But you got to watch that because STDs, whoa. Mm-hmm. I, there was a young lady calling me. You, you just made it. You, you just spotted skin in your teeth. <laughs> it was a one, young lady. She's 21 years old. She just um, graduated from college. And... I picked up the phone. I said, this is Queen of Four. How can I help you? She took a deep breath and she began to weep. She didn't cry. She began to weep. I knew what it was. She said, I just got out of school and I have herpes. Mm. Wow. And um, my mate has herpes. My friends have herpes. And we're all suffering. So will I ever be able to have children? Well, we're not really a prisoner to disease. We're not a prisoner to disease. Disease is... Um, your immune system. That's why during the pandemic, was we started waking up. That was like a wake up. Right. Was. A lot of, we, oh, you know a little bit, but you got some ginger, you got some elderberry, <laughs> you got some garlic, <laughs> right. some vitamin D. You know, we all started, wait, wait, our, our culture started kicking in. So when the herpes is like, it's a pandemic, but people don't even know that it's a pandemic. See, it's one thing if you know some of the pandemic, you can try to protect yourself, but if you don't know that the person to your right or to your left has herpes. So you just wow. can't just jump in the bed with just anybody because you're going to pick up and walk with what they gave you. And because when somebody gets herpes, they're angry. Mm. And they want somebody else to join them. So mm. you're going to be a partner. So you have to look at a woman or a man from a whole other level. Say, so, okay, no, what? You got to get a reading. You got to get a meditation. You got to <laughs> do a fast. You got to clean. So, okay, a now. Test. So you just cannot look at the tits and the butt and all of that as, as the way in to your, to your joy. Because why are you you're doing that? Because you want to be satisfied. But that's a lower frequency. Just like you yeah. said, okay, in this platform, you woke up. Your own work helped to heal you. You came in here for more than one reason. You thought you came in here for one reason, but you didn't know it was going to heal you and take even to higher ground. Facts. And have you thinking different. And they say, I'm thinking about a family. But that's because you're, you're a nation builder. When you do something like this, this is nation building. Why are we the ones on the lowest, to- lowest point of, on everything? Economics, we're not. We, make, we bring money in, but we are still sick. We have that, so that herpes piece is very deep, but we can boost up our immune system, yeah, and we can overcome it. But when you don't know any better, you think that that's the, that's a life a death sentence, yeah, and that you can't have children and you cannot have a mate. No, but you can if you detox. But it's gonna take a way of life. You can't just jump in and jump out. So I'm really glad to hear that you was able to overcome. So, <laughs> and that actually goes into the next point here because mm-hmm. I actually wanted one of the things that even now having this mindset, when I speak to Mm -hmm. a young lady, if she communicates to me Mm -hmm. that she was on birth control her whole childhood, like from from high school up until now, I get concerned. I get very concerned because I'm I'm just seeing, I just feel like I'm seeing like this generation or the recent generation struggle with birth a lot more. Then I feel like a lot of our elders yeah. struggled, especially our ladies. And yeah. I don't know what it is. You hit it. You hit it. Because the birth control is being used um, for women, who, for young girls who have menstrual pain. Just, just right. put acne on the side. But primarily, with the, they are in pain during their menstrual flow. Some of them are such pain to their bedridden. I was one of those that was bedridden. So I, I can relate. And so then they go to their physician to get rid of the pain. Mm. And the painkillers are no longer working. But the fact that you're getting a painkiller, if you're taking a, just the name a painkiller, what else is it killing? Mm. It is killing your womb. It can kill your opportunity to be fertile when you're ready to have a child. Because you're doing it for some of the, time, some of the, um, the birth control. Our, our daughters are 13 and 14 years old, and they're on birth control because of the pain. But that's where my work comes in, Womb Care Love. 
because you can actually learn how to get rid of the pain holistic. It takes 12 weeks. It takes a season. Wow. It takes a rites of passage to get rid of that pain. Because if you, a woman, as she grows and she has that pain, she can be, get, start getting headaches, start getting mood swings. I knew one person, she would go blind for a few hours. She was on painkillers. What? For, 20, for about 19 years, she was on, pain, on um, birth control pills. So the side effects are the hair loss, stress, wow. anxiety. So you're actually not with a woman who's whole. That's why you're also leery. She's broken already. And she's young, because that means she's been on it since she was a teenager, because she didn't know there was an alternative way to heal her womb on foods and juices and herbs and plant-based living to give her that pain. That pain is not just physical. It appears to be physical, that menstrual pain. It's also psychological, it's emotional, it's dietary, it's a home life. So it's a lot of pain that has to be eradicated, flushed out, detox out the body, because that is who you're going to mate with, their pain. Now, Queen, what I would say, a lot of the people, too, that get put on, mm -hmm. especially those of us that come, you know, low income, yeah. we growing up, we, we don't have money. One of the biggest fears of a lot of these parents is that their child is out here having sex mm -hmm. and pregnant. their child gets pregnant, young, yeah. which they can't afford right. that to happen. And I just want to know your good counsel mm -hmm. in this situation, because as somebody who aspires to be a father, mm -hmm. you know, we have other audience members that might already have daughters or be, want to bring them into this world. Do you feel like mm -hmm. it is a good decision for a parent to put their child on birth control at a young age to, you know, prevent their child from having an early or young birth? What, see, that's, see, that's where the problem is. 13 years old. We had... We've, we've had it twice. We're going to continue working on that. The rites of passage is supposed to start at 13, mm. 13, 14 years of age. So that means we are, we are full adults, and we've never had real guidance on how to be women, men, whole families. So as a result, our teenagers are in the same state. They don't know either. So we have to actually start early by building community. Building community, you're doing a rites of passage in your own way. You're helping community to grow and keeping in communication. So we have to start them, not, you're giving them the pill because there is no rites of passage. You just send them to school. Mm. And what, is, what are they learning? Are they learning values that you want them to have? Are they learning how to be in family? You, I mean, and most children are living inside of someone else's mind in their phones. You could be talking to them and they don't even hear you. Someone else is raising them. So we really have to get to our children's mind and build up their self-esteem. Otherwise, these young girls are gonna look for a man because their father's not there. And that's a problem. So we even have to, women and men have to find a way to come back to each other. We have to get back to each other. Even, in, in, in my, one thing that my daughter would say, and I separated from my father when they were young, she said, you never say anything bad about him. I said, because if I say something bad about him and you're half of him, you're part of him, then I have, I'm putting you down also. Mm. And you will come to your own awareness and your own conclusion, because maybe that relationship was just about me and him being out of sync, and it had nothing really to do with you. So let me not put my issues on you as, as, um, as the child growing up. So you may not love your father as a result of me being angry or mad. And then you kill the child's spirit. And they're going to look for their father or they're gonna look for their mother outside the home. And they're having sex with that person that they're really needing someone to teach them and to guide them. And when you work as a community, what ends up happening, it was never, I, I, I talked to many women and most women are angry at their mothers, mm. right? And being angry at your mother, and it's, and it's on, on both sides, but they're angry at their mother because the mother was not supposed to be 100% everything. Say the mother is 45% and the father's 35 or 90, you know, whatever his percentage, but it's also grandmother. Uh -huh. And then what, what about your best friend next door who has a lot of wisdom? They may be 10% and then, and then your, um, your, your, you know, your best friend. It's, in other words, it takes a community, it takes a village to raise a child. So you have to get your village incorporated. When my children were small, I was aware of that. So I went to someone like a Bob Law from Night Talk Radio, and I went to Imhotep, even with my friends. 
um, uh, Imhotep, Gary Bird, WBLS, they were smart, intelligent men. And I would have them talk to my children. And I would get my, I, they, that, my children raised, was raised saying, auntie this and, and grandmother this, and, because I made sure that they had family beyond myself. Mm. It was never designed for just a woman to be the be all and the end all. That's why you have angry children, because it was never set up that way. It was never designed for the man to be a single parent and for him to be the only one. It literally takes us all working together. But you can't always trust people because we're sick. We're toxic. We got to go through rights. We got to go through healing in order to be able to be whole for each other as that level of family. Extended family has to be activated. So we're not afraid of that 13 year old or that 14 year old because the family, the community is circled around. And that those different elders that you can trust, they are giving wisdom and knowledge to your child. Mm. They're helping you to grow your family and you're helping to grow their family. Wow. That's African culture. You, now, so you mentioned that most women have issues, underlying issues with their mother. Mm -hmm. And um, I spoke about this a bit before we started the show. It reminds me of my family dynamic at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandmother, she's actually transitioned. She, now she has dementia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could be talking to my grandma all day. She'll call me her brother's name a million times in the conversation. Mm -hmm. She'll continue to ask me the same questions, you know, and she'll mm -hmm. ask me about his life. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, I'm an answer. So dementia is full effect, right? Now, I have never heard her speak so clearly, except when it comes to the relationship with her and my mother. So and this is what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. She could call me her brother's name a million times, ask me a bunch of questions, but when it comes to her detailing about something my mother has done, it's clear, it's assertive, and it's like, of all the things she could remember, she remembers that is their she... relationship is toxic. Okay. And my question mm. for you is, how like why is that why do so many women have these issues with their mother and what is the first place to start the correction process hmm well it, uh, it always brings us back to being stolen we actually have to start from the beginning man and woman woman heal thyself man heal thyself give yourself a season don't even try to get a mate. Get mated with yourself. Get with yourself. Give yourself a season or maybe four seasons because you are carrying your grandfather's pain, your grandmother's pain, your cousin's pain. It's in the bloodline. And so we have, in Atlanta, you know, I look at trees, not that as trees should be for nourishment. But the trees here in all the South was for hanging, mm. right? So we already in an environment that is violent to us. So we cannot help but be violent to each other. So we oftentimes, I, I, just to, I, I spoke to about five women this morning for 10 minute tune-ups. And one woman said, I'm, I, I just, I'm so angry at my mother. And one, she said, and, and this was at graduation, another one said, you know what, before sacred woman, I said, the only time I want to see my mother is when she's six feet under. That's how deep that is, right? Wow. She said, once we got to the gateway of my aunt, which is like seven, eight weeks in, mm. you told us all, call your mother tonight and just say thank you. They were sucking up teeth. Same way I asked them to, talk to, to reach out to their father, we got to the next gateway, there was anger. And that anger is eating away at the souls of the daughters but it's already eaten the soul of the mother. So I said, if you heal, I tell them, if you can do that and just tell your mother, thank you, your mother will start to cry. Her heart will open up. Don't judge her, just say thank you. Maybe thank you for sending me over to grandmother because I couldn't raise you. <laughs> I didn't have the wherewithal. You know, thank you for having, uh, you know, shelter and some food. I know you were screaming and cursing because you was frustrated and you didn't have, and you were struggling. So in that, the gratitude opens and heals the heart. By the time we got to the ascension and graduation, her mother was there at the graduation. Wow. And a lot of that happens. The wow. mother-daughter relationships begin to heal. But it's on both sides. Like, I really feel as a mother, I'm learning from my children. I'm their student also. And my daughter is sometimes my coach. Sometimes my son is my coach. I'm their coach. You know, we help each other. 
as a family, we have to begin to reach out and help each other to grow up, to be able to be functional again. Because otherwise, we just, the women give up on the men, the men give up on the women. That's how the men start drawing from women to women, because he, he can't find one just balanced or in harmony or could be kind or compassionate. Or black women, they, they, they have us um, coined as the black women, the man, black women with attitude. So that's, where's that attitude coming from? It's coming from a plantation, from generation to generation. It's like when you season your food overnight, it right. tastes real good, it's stronger. Well, when, you, when you're seasoned, it was a process of seasoning on the plantation that got us to the point where we are so divided, right? And so it's gonna take, it's gonna take courage to go back to your father or to your mother and to give them the love in spite of themselves in spite of themselves. Because if they could do better, they would have done better. But maybe you, because you've done studies, you've been growing, you've been reading, you've been doing some soul searching, you've been doing some healing. So now you can be the one to be able to lift up your family. So you do it, you be the one. I took, I took myself, I said, I'm gonna be the one. And matter of fact, I didn't stop at my own family, I went to other families. <laughs> <laughs> Thousands. <laughs> yeah. I mean, millions at this point. It's it's really incredible. And guys, if anybody in here, you know, has any questions uh, questions about the uh, issues in the relationships that you might have had growing up, anything that you might be struggling in your healing, we have put the link in here. They're a little slow to join here tonight, which I understand. It's a very deep conversation. It's a but big we, stage with the queen. It is a big stage. But we did have a question. We had a super chat come in, and we can go ahead and take that super chat in the meantime. Um, until we get people to come backstage and join the conversation, the link is in the chat. Definitely. And shout out to all the new members. Shout out to my girl, Solana Soul, member for five months. She sent over the, the hearts. I mm -hmm. love that. Shout out, shout out to Simply Nzinga and Orlando for dropping the bottles. Five and ten memberships. Another and one. Shout out to uh, Selena says, how does a woman start the journey towards womb wellness? Mm. Well, you start by looking at your menses. If your menses is um, seven, well, Wait, five. Wait, what's a menses? Your menstruation. Okay. Right? If it is, you can really figure out where you are by the number of days of your menstrual cycle. If it's five, six, seven days or more, you're hemorrhaging. But you don't necessarily look at it as hemorrhaging, but black women are having more, um, you know, they, they're actually getting blood from others in order to build up their blood account. But you can do that through beets. You can do that through green foods. You can build up yourself. You don't have to have a blood transfusion. So if, you know, if your menstrual flow is long, then that means you're sick. If you have a fibroid, of course, it means that your uterus is impacted with congestion and mucus mm. forming foods. And 90% of black women have fibroid tumors. And the book second was written um, in 2000. 45% of black women have fibroid tumors. Now, 90% of black women have fibroid tumors. Wow. And at least 30% of those women are getting hysterectomies. So it's like an end of life um, walk. Wow. 45% of black women are dying in childbirth with their babies. So we're in a crisis. So technology is growing, but we're dying. There's something wrong with that picture. So you look at the, the if you're clotting, if you have a vaginal discharge, if you have mood swings on your menstrual flow, that can all change, but it's going to take three 28-day cycles to detox the womb, to change the diet, to go into plant-based living. So that's a, a law. You have to go into plant-based living. You would go by the 12 hours of the night, for example. The 12 hours of the night starts at 6 o'clock when the sun goes down to when the sun comes back up. And during that time, that's when you fast. But most people don't eat well during the day, and at nighttime, they have two or three meals. So they lay down on that food and they wake up the next day heavy, their wombs are heavy, their colons are impacted, their blood is impure. So when they have their menstrual flow, they're bleeding heavy and the tumor is coming. And even if they have the tumor removed, it's gonna come back again a month, no, it comes back probably a year or two because we haven't changed our habits. We haven't changed our thoughts, we haven't changed our foods. And so that growth happens again. So if she wants to start, she has to start by just cutting out the foods that grow a fibroid, food that have you bleeding heavy. That is the dairy, dairy feeds the growth. That is the white flour products, that is the microwaving, that is the late night eating, that is the eating of the, the beef, the pork, the goat, the lamb. So cut back, cut it in half in one month. 
and then start to go into plant-based living. You're not going to be able to do it maybe like I went cold turkey mm. because I was extremely sick as a, as a teenager. But I really wanted to heal. She may not be able to go cold turkey, so give yourself a season of daily practice of natural living. And then I'll be, I'm taking women through uh, 12 weeks for those who want to um, really get into a guided detox and not just gra grabbing a book or just trying to figure it out. But inside of Sacred Women, I have about 100 pages on how to heal your womb. Mm -hmm. So you can, 25 womb rejuvenation techniques, there's inversion therapy, which is an ancient African form of medicine to bring your soul back to life. It brings your body and your womb back to life. There are, um, for those women who are bleeding heavy, you might want to take um, your golden rod. Um, if you're bleeding heavy, you want to um, fast during the night and juice and eat whole foods in the daytime. So there's mm. some natural principles that women can take on to really gain control of their wombs. And it's, it's just the beauty of it. If a woman truly heals, she'll attract and make this healthier. You know? That's so true. Yeah, because if you're attracting an unhealthy mate, then that can also in strengthen the, the bleeding. Because when you are toxic yourself, your sex is more aggressive. And when you're clean, your sex is sweeter and more loving and compassionate. You're lovemaking. Wow. Whoa. That's a, yeah, that was different. Hold on. Hold when you, on. When you're toxic, the sex is more the aggressive. The sex is more, and that affects the bleeding. Mm-hmm. Does she bleed heavier? And then she, and then she becomes, um, she can rip her uterine walls with that level. And then she starts numbing out. Then she has more pain. It's like she's, you're, you should not be in pain as a woman, we, but we're thinking that we're supposed to be in pain because we're women. I, when I was 13 years old, I said, oh, so this is a woman? This is my menstrual flow? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. I can't, I can't survive this pain. And we've learned, so that's why we end up taking birth control because we don't know any better. And it's like we're in a cesspool. We can't even get out of it because we have no knowledge of self, of transformation, of womb healing. I thought that's just how that works, but that's a 100% myth so about you, the pain. He's a part of the problem over mm -hmm. here, Queen. It's not necessary. <laughs> so let me. Let, I mean, let, I think most people think no, that's no, just. No, no, I agree. I guess we are we all miseducated, yeah. you know, on how this stuff works. Even me now trying to eat healthy. I'm going through this whole, you know, rabbit hole of information. And even the things I thought was healthy was a lie. And it's kind of crazy me just, you know, putting it all together. But you said something that I actually want to go back on because you said that I think a, a high percentage of our ladies are dying mm -hmm. at childbirth. Yeah. At childbirth. Yeah. Should, you know, should we be, should we be having our children in these hospitals? Well, you know, one of the things that the pandemic did is sent us home. I remember one of my friends, she's a doctor and a physician, and she said that she would even tell her patients, you know, go home. And I said, oh, we're going home now. And my work is based on to create a healer in every family and a wellness center in every home. So that is a foundation for building a strong nation. When you can, your home becomes your hospital. Incredible. Yeah, so the kitchen is not just a normal kitchen. That's your pharmacy. So what you make, a soup, a salad, a juice, a tea, or what have you, you should, have, you should know what to do for diabetes, high blood pressure, basic issues in the household, and you can be serving your family wellness. Every time you have a meal, every time you have a juice, every time you run a bath, the bathroom is not a bathroom. It's called a hydrotherapy room. That's my philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to take painkillers and tranquilizers and things to numb out your depression. You just take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> right. Soak the body. You want to take a quick shower. You're not going to resolve too much in the shower. Hit and miss. No, you have to soak it. That's our culture. There, was, there would be a bath that you would go to for spiritual development. You go take a bath. You soak in the salt water. You come out. You're wrapped in aromatherapy, oils. You do a three or four day fast in the temples and you would come out renewed and fortified. And that we can do in our home. Mm. And then the doctors would just be, you know, you just check, in, you know, check yourself in, but you don't, but your real big work is at home. Do your homework and learn how to heal yourself. And that's what I teach. So mm -hmm. pretty much in, in other words, we should not be trying to have our babies at these hospitals. We need to figure out how to do it at the house. Well, you can because you have midwives and doulas 
and you, uh, you know, we already have everything set up as a people. We just have to now do the networking and recognize that we already have some things in place that we can have our babies at home and we can breastfeed. Well, women, we have, we can't stay and breastfeed because we have to go outside to work. But why would we have to go outside to work? We could work in our home. Everything is in the home. Your community is in the home. Your work is in the home. Your finances in the home. I mean, when I was I raised my children, I was raising my children in the home, and so I would just I would be I did colon therapy, I did consultations, and I did it in my home because I wanted to be able to do the homework. I wanted to be able to keep my eye on them. I wanted to be able to raise them myself. But then when I took them outside, I brought them to cultural schools, schools that were vegetarian consciousness that was teaching them culture about themselves. And so that, that school or that hospital is really should be the house in the home. So we do homeschooling. That's one thing we can begin to do. And like you don't have, like if you can get a group of like-minded people, four or five families together, then you can all share in the homeschooling. It's not going to be on one family member. We have to take our healing on every level back home because you know, but if you know, if, if you go to a hospital, if you have to go outside, but the hospital should complement the family. And I'm going to say this disclaimer, if you're seeing your physician, continue seeing your physician. Right. <laughs> that, was in the, that was in the book, too. Yeah. By the way, right? uh -huh. <laughs> Always consult your primary physician. Yeah. But but at the same time, also learn how to be your own healed. There is an affirmation our ancestors gave to us thousands of years ago. And I opened it up with the expanded um, anniversary edition. It says, to the women who we are as black women, African women. We are the women who lighten the darkness. We have come to lighten the darkness. It is lightened. We have overcome the destroyers. We are there for those who weep, who hide their faces, who sunk down. They looked upon us then. We are the women. We are the healers. We are the women. We are the healers. That turns everything to this rightful position. The feminine principle is the primary healer of her home. But if she does not know the laws of nature and how to heal using the elements, air, fire, water, earth, nature's remedies, then she is inept. And so all she has in her household is violence and negativity and stress and brokenness. But if she can learn the principles of what our ancestors told us we're to do as women, then the home can be a home. It can be a balanced home. But that's going to take away. It's not overnight. You know, and it's not something you could just do and get it done. You have to live this life. It is a way of life. You know, and then, then you build, and then you begin to shed your father's pain and your mother's pain and your family's pain, and you become the light of your family. I learned that from my parents because my mother made it to 100. She just made her transition. 100 um, years old. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Centaurian, right? Is that, that's what that's called. Right? I have not. Centurion. Know. Centurion. Okay, yeah, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and but what happens is, um, my parents, in, when um, I have a dream, I was there. I was nine years old, Martin Luther King. Wow. And my parents, I was in the middle. I remember that I had padded leather shoes and I was kicking the mud, and they had the umbrella over me, but they put me in an environment of liberation. And then, but there wasn't women that was at the forefront of the civil rights, um, at least that moment, that time. So I realized my mother, and my mother's passing, I realized that she was a, a civil rights uh, pioneer. Because then in about in the 60s, latter part of the 60s and 70s, she, with uh, 12 other women, developed a, a civil rights movement called Progressive Women for Civil Rights. That was my foundation for the sake of women's rights of passage. So from my mother's era, she knew to gather women together for civil rights so that our voices would be heard. And in my era came sacred women so the women's medicine would be felt mm. in our families and in our communities. Mm. And so with that, I've been observing our men are raising up because the women are raising the men up through who they are. And a woman who is awake and who's uh, healthy enough and who sustain herself, she will attract a healthy mate, unless she plays herself short and does not believe that she can. But if she can hold on and really elevate, the man will be seeking her out. And that is the resurrection of a nation, through the women. 
And as we sit on our seat of power, and it shows up in a symbol that we're told that the symbol is evil, but it's not. It's our culture. Our culture, we've been, you know, has been <laughs> beat up because they want to keep us slaves. The, the, the symbol of the woman is the ovum, o, it's a circle. The base is called the yank. The base of it is to represent the masculine principle. The male principle is to lift up the feminine principle because she's going to carry the life. And from that, you have the two sides, which are the continuation of a people, which are the children. Mm. So we can bring ourselves into what the aunt represents life, represent family. If we can come together knowing that family is the most important thing, but you might have to start with yourself as your first, your inner family. From this inner family, being committed, learning your rites of passage, attracting a healthy mate, growing yourself in that relationship, bonding, then you bring life into the family, a child. Mm. That returning ancestor comes out as a, a young prince or a young princess, and then they're raised on the highest level. And so they're not just squandered out into the world and, and um, whored out. They're lifted up, and that is nation building. And it's not played out. It's something that has to happen if we are to be sustainable people. Incredible. So, Queen, you got me thinking about a few things, and now I'm thinking about the things that I have accepted to be true that mm -hmm. may or may not be true, so I want you to help me out. So, and I think a lot of guys think this, when it comes to female, and you know, female relationships, mm -hmm. and I've seen, you know, a plethora of women, my sister, women I've dated in the past, friends, where a lot of their relationships with other women seem to be very fickle. It seems to be extremely competitive, they could be friends one week and the next week they not be friends. If it's more than two of them, it's mm -hmm. usually this warring dynamic where, you know, you I might be dating the one that gets left out in something. Or, you know, you might even be your sister or somebody you have a relationship. They might be treating the other women a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So is that just a woman's nature? Is that typical? Or this is just most people or most women in particular just operating in unhealthy, unhealthy ways in their relationships? That is the system that is here. But the original system will bring the women together. That is Ost and Nebethet. Ost and Nebethet, these are the two women are based on our culture. They came together to raise a nation. Ost is the mother, she's the queen. Nebethet is her sacred sister. She's the intuitive one. When Ost, when uh, Asar, which is represented as the king, went out into the world to spread Ma'at. Mother As was still at home, in the home, which is the temple, the shrine, the sanctuary. He, was, he met with challenge. Asar met with challenge. He was cut up in 14 pieces. Those pieces, as the story is told, were scattered around amongst the land. As, the great mother, went to her sister, Nebethet. Nebethet is the lady of the house the lady of the heavenly realms, the intuitive one who mastered the cosmos. They came together to seek out the king. They found all of his pieces, 13 of his pieces was found. It's like our men, drugs, alcohol, over sex, you know. They gathered him together and there was one piece that was missing was the phallus. Those women together, they built his phallus. They built his manhood. And then Mother Ah symbolic, they put him on a table and the great mother went over his, uh, she went over his body, and that was the first immaculate conception, and she took in his seed. But she was able to take in his seed because Nebethet is the lady of the breath. She went to his nostrils, and she, with her wings, she blew breath into his being. So symbolically, the women have to come together and unify in order for the man to come forward. And in sacred women, that we have what's called Asenebit had sister to sister, and the women help each other. They detox the jealousy, the crabs in the barrel, the one up on each other. When one sister is blessed, we all celebrate that because mm -hmm. we know that if you're in a circle of blessed women, you're gonna be blessed too. And then we look for each other's blessings, and then we fortify each other's blessings. So women get to have healthy relationships. And when they get healthy relationships, they can now go back and talk to their mother. 
with respect and honor and forgive their mother because they realize we've all been broken. Mm. We're all having issues with our mothers and with our fathers. And it's been designed that way that we would never rise up again. This is picture in my mind that I, uh, it's um, right now, what is, mm, I, it was a stack of black men in the prison system. They were stacked up on each other, it looked like the slave ship. And I, I walked out the house with that picture in my mind because it's now we have the new Jim Crow. The, new, the plantation life is not over. So now we're filling up the prisons because that's a corporation, just like it was on a plantation was a corporation. And we was the raw material, we were the cows as far as they could, and so we got branded. And so we've got to fight against that. We've got to fight against that with everything we have. And that comes in forgiveness, love, unity, working together, if, if someone is weak, don't put them down, don't talk bad, and that's, that's the word. Because when you talk them down, you're talking yourself down. And as a people, you can't build on negative conversation with each other. You see someone weak, you go and help them pick them up. Because when you're at that point and you, you need help, somebody will help pick you up. It's calm, it's a circle, it's called Shai. So we've got to really build each other up now as a people, period. We've got to look at our parents different and understand that they've gone through some, a lot of pain to get to that point where you can't communicate with each other. But as you heal, it will, it will come to pass. I've seen it happen over and over again, that just the ones that she was angry about, you'll have peace. Even when someone says, for example, I'm divorced. I said, don't say that you're divorced. Say you're going through a transformation. <laughs> it's a totally right. different conversation. Because when you're divorced, you cut, up the bed, you cut up the house, you cut up the children, you cut up the sofa, you cut up, you just cut each other up, and you can cut <laughs> each other for a, a whole lifetime. Right. But when you say, I'm going through a transformation, that means you are recognized that that relationship had a purpose. And that relationship taught you something about yourself, good, better, and different. It taught you something, what to do or what not to do, or to, to not just think with your loins, but think with your heart, your mind, think on from a higher plane. So you learn something about that relationship. You could actually tell that relationship, thank you for the lessons I have learned. Now I'm wiser. Now I know how to discern. Because in, when you did, we didn't have an intuitive eye wasn't open, you couldn't see past the person's flesh. But when the Ucha, the first eye, the East Indians called the third eye, Africans would consider the first eye, the all-seeing eye, then you can see past someone's flesh. You can see, you actually see beyond what they're saying. You can see a contract. Mm. Without even knowing what's good or bad, you could just feel it. You could feel the I came, I felt the room. I said, hmm, I know where I am. <laughs> I, like that. I like that. Queen, That's I got, how it feels, baby. I got one more for you. And this is something I think many men adopt as well because um, I'm having a conversation. Um, it was maybe like five or six of us. Mm -hmm. And um, I, was de I shouldn't have said this, but I'm detailing to the guys why I stopped dealing with a certain young lady. And I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't want to talk about that. She's crazy. You know, That's, and I should not have said that, right? Well, it's okay because you're crazy. But, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> There's a part, not 100%. I get it, I get it. You're, it's not 100%, but that part of you, that may be your grandmother's part or your auntie's part of you that sh sprung out of you. You're like, oh, how did I do that? Why did I say that? Oh, that person is bringing back to me. So you really can't look at somebody from outside. You have to say, oh, that is a part of my past mm. or my present or exactly where I'm about to go to. So you think of relationships different because they really are the legs and the arms of your consciousness. That makes sense. Okay, okay. So... This is what I stated, right? Okay. Now, one of the guys' response was, was man, they all crazy. And then it was every, all of the guys in the room was mm -hmm. agreed at once. Yeah. And I think when I stated crazy and what the, the other guys were referring to was this level of emotional yeah. impulsivity. Mm -hmm. And my question for you, are all women, do all women have that, this high level of, if something happens, you just never know what might come out of their mouth, what they might do, or is that some issue that, you know, the average woman is typically dealing with? Well, yes, they have no control because their blood is toxic, their colons are impacted, their arteries are congested, they're not eating real food. So they, real food comes out of the ground, out of the soil. So how much real food are you taking in the course of a day or the course of your lifetime. Mm. So you're not really functioning as a human being, as a whole person. So of course you're gonna be cursing someone out at the drop of a dime, a bad attitude, a sucking of the teeth, because you're not well. And it's no judgment, it's just we need to heal. 
And because you're really not getting the real person. That's not really that person. That's the environment. That's social media. A, a lot of people are getting very depressed because they're looking at social media, for example, and saying, well, that person looks like they're so together and they got all this. And that's causing a lot of anxiety and stress and anger and rage. So we're eating a lot of madness. Outside what we're seeing, what's putting in our mouth, the smells that we're bringing in, the visuals that we're seeing, and that's what's creating the, the person that you're talking to. They're not whole yet. But when they become whole, then you're actually meeting a new person. You don't even know who they are. Mm -hmm. They don't even know who they are yet. Because they don't want to be that way. They don't want to be angry. They don't want to be quick to anger. But as a whole, we're all living a toxic lifestyle generally. And that's what keeps us not well. Wow. Man. And, and there you have it. It's kind of crazy because I'm seeing the chat right now. You got a, you got this this regal energy about you that's actually intimidating a lot of people. They scared to come up on here <laughs> and join. And it's okay, y'all, because if y'all, listen, if y'all going to miss out on this opportunity, <laughs> right. that is 100% on y'all. They get ready to dial in. They're like, you know what? I got too many problems. I, I can't call it. <laughs> I got too, you know what? No, I got too don't. many problems. No, they don't. No, <laughs> I, and I want them to be comfortable. But, you know, most people know me for healing. So... You know, in, inside of the plant-based world, whatever your issues are, I'm talking to you. <laughs> whatever your issues are, there's something that you need. And mm. once you get what you need, then all of a sudden you become balanced. So you should just call in now and say, you know what? I have a headache. I'm bleeding heavy. I'm depressed. I got a bad attitude. I want to cut somebody, you know, <laughs> you know whatever it is, and what's, what's the matter it is, and then I will say, we'll take this and that, and I'll give you a little formula, and you take that formula, and your life will be different in seven days. Uh -oh. Y'all better call in right now, because this look, is a, you just, a, rare, a rare situation they, they, right here. They popping in now, so we're going to actually bring some people to the stage. It looks like Tony just came backstage. What up, Tony? How you doing, sister? I'm good. I'm good for having me. So, um... The, so hold the, on, wait, quick, quick, quick question. Just hardly initiated uh, <laughs> uh, ritual here. I gotta make sure we go ahead and we get your age and your location before you go ahead and ask your question, sweetheart. Let's get it, Tommy. Um, I am, oh, and I am forty-six. You kind of going in and out. Say that one more time for me. I said I'm from Chicago. I live in Chicago, and I am forty-six years old. There you go. Awesome. Shot town in the building. What you got for us, Tony? Um, I was listening to, um, is it Queen Afua? I can't, Queen, I want to make Afua. I could just call me Queen. Miss Queen. Um, mm -hmm. I related to everything that you're saying, especially what intrigued me is when you were talking about our menstrual cycle. Yes. And um, over the last year, and I just chalked it up to, you know, maybe I'm getting close to the, to going through menopause. But I got my hormones level check, and I'm not even close to that. And my period is now five days, and it's very heavy. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is one thing I wanted to talk about. And another thing is this family healing that I really want to get more connected with with you. Well, you already have. I see you the symbol of the ankh on your shoulder, so you're already connected. That's why you're actually, no. Oh, um, this is uh, my auntie mm -hmm. passed away of, of breast cancer a few years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just a remembrance of her. She was one of she was my my best friend. Okay, so she's your ancestor. You she is my ancestor. She's a, she's a wonderful ancestor. So talk to her between the hours of four and six, and she will definitely support you. Pour a libation, light a candle, and she has a, some some messages for you to help you through. In terms of your menstrual flow, our menses should be no more than a day, two or three days tops, with no pain, no clotting, no PMS, and no thinning of the uterine line. So if you can get to that level, you can do that in about 12 weeks. Okay. And start to work with the plant-based lifestyle. I mean, you can always reach out to me, and I'll, and I'll give you, you know, hands-on support. So some of the things that I mentioned in terms of the elements, your body is made of four elements. And the mm -hmm. top of the element is the mind. So I'm going to just give you some things real quick. To get your menstrual flow in order, take red foods, red foods okay. and green foods. And you okay. can take red food would be in the form of a half of a beet, juice it or grate it and put it into your salad. It will build up your blood so that you won't lose so much blood. Okay. Then take the green to help to stabilize and to calm you down. 
So that cleanses out the system and repairs. Then I want you to drink water. Uh, you, have to, you have to bathe in water, drink your water, so you want to have water at 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay, me too. Ready. That's mine? <laughs> yes, that's yours. Let's toast. <laughs> Let's toast Let's, to I water. Gallon, I drink a You've gallon been drinking. of water a day, and oh. uh, I am a bather in salt. I, I do believe Oh, good. Salt. Well, that's yeah. probably why you're the first one who called in because you're already on the same page. You're walking Amen. a path of wellness already. You just have to keep walking and go deeper now. And, okay. and stay with when the sun goes down, liquefy. Just have juices and fruits and um, tea and be light. And do that for seven days. And you're going to wake up in seven days with energy and vitality. It was just backed up. It was waiting to come through you. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that because it's like, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but, you know, trying to lose weight because I gained a little bit. Okay. It's really stagnated. So I'm just like getting really frustrated, but I, I'm going to take your advice and see mm -hmm. what that gets me. Tony, thank you so much for calling up here, sweetheart. Thank I you, appreciate Tony. you popping off and being I brave, okay? I appreciate your show. She's I the love first your one. show. Thank you. We <laughs> thank appreciate you, Tony. Yes. Tony's cool. She, look, Tony, shout out to Tony for being the first one. Yeah, she broke the ice. She Tony did. came up here, broke the ice. Let me go ahead and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and bring a few uh, more of the ladies up back here that's backstage. We got Mel backstage here. Mel, what's up with your sister? Hello, 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 hello. Um, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thank you to Queen of Fua. I had the courage to reconnect and call my mother this morning. And it was from one of your viral videos that was on Instagram about how when we have an issue with our mother, we have to heal ourselves. That's right. And it is our right and duty to, you know, stay in honor and respect of her. Um, and so thank you. I just wanted to come in and say that. Wow. That's right. what's that's up. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank that that's you. that's huge. How, how long had it been since you you kind of had this these issues with your your mom? So, it had been for quite some time, but we had went through a period of not talking to each mm -hmm. other since September of 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So now this is a whole new beginning, a whole new surge. Yeah. So just keep that going and just continue to say, "Mom, I appreciate everything you've done, seen and unseen." <laughs> Find the good, and she will find the good in you. Yeah. You know, it's reciprocity. Okay? Thank you. Look, thank you so much for coming up here, Mel, okay? That's a blessing right there. Yeah. Blessings. All right, now. Keep them rolling. Tom. I'm going to go ahead going. and bring Chrissy on stage. Chrissy, what's popping with you? <laughs> Hi, good Hi. night. Oh, good I night. was listening. I came in late. I missed a lot. But, hold on, um, wait, hold on, wait. Age and location, Chrissy. Yeah, well, Mel that, mixed that, up. that accent. And yeah. I, I gotta hear. I want to hear what the location is because I hear the accent. So, although I'm in America, I'm a Jamaican. Um, I'm 34. We'll be okay. 35 in May. Okay. Happy early birthday. Yes. So I was listening to something that Queen said earlier about mm -hmm. um, issues you might have, and then the last time you remember. Because I came in late. Um, maybe your inner child, maybe when you were seven. And mm -hmm. for some reason, I can recall every time having a, a flashback from when I was mm -hmm. a kid. My yeah. parents got divorced, mm -hmm. but they both got remarried as I got older. Um, I remember my parents having an argument, and I think mm -hmm. I was somewhere around seven. And I can always remember that situation. I don't know why. Every time I would remember my parents when they were together, that's where I can remember. I can't mm -hmm. remember anything else mm -hmm. from earlier on, but that I can much remember that. Yeah, it had that much of an impact. And so what happens is we t if you study your relationships currently, I don't know where you are in your relationship, how are you with your mate? So I am divorced. Okay. Um, so it, it ca it ca it's a carryover. So what you have to do is go back to that seven-year-old and you have to actually reset her. And you have to come to her with a healed being. Go sit with her and tell her. She might be under the bed in a corner somewhere and looking out the window. She's depressed and she's sad. You have to go back to her and tell her to come with you into the healing. It, she will go with you into the healing mode where you are and then you're gonna start walking with her in your sacred journey. I would say take the rites of passage because if you take the rites of passage, that, uh, that inner child who's crying, she'll start to heal with all the other women that are going to be crying and letting go of that pain of their inner child that we keep recycling. Because mm -hmm. we're recycling our relationships from the seven-year-old to the teenager to the young woman 
It doesn't stop until we become aware of it and we get into our healing work. Mm. Thank you. Because mm-hmm. I've, I've, you know, struggled with it. I'm always wondering why I always remember that. It's not like... Because it, it was, was such any- a crisis. It, the cri- it was very loud. That crisis continues to repeat itself. So that, because that was the end of a relationship and you felt that. You felt mm-hmm. the end. And that I devastated did. you. I right? did. Because yeah. I, I love my dad. Trust me, mm-hmm. I love my dad. Yeah. And I do love my mom, you yes. know. Um, but my relationship with my dad was a little bit more special. Mm-hmm. So I think maybe I kind of so look you hurt. at... You were hurt from that. So that's why you remembered. Because either you moved to another location, all of a sudden, slam, yell, scream, whatever happened, boom, your life changed. That's why you remember how you traveled. But now you're going to start, just the fact that you're speaking it out, you're starting to let it go. And you're starting to yes. grow out of it and know that you're not a prison to that little child being in pain. That little child is here right now inside of you. And you can heal her. Give her a healing bath tonight. Get I ed- should. Okay. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Chrissy, thank you so much for logging on, okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Be blessed. Good night. All right. They still rolling in. We got Lady Better coming to the stage. Lady Better, what's popping with you? Hey. What's up? Y'all? Can y'all yeah. hear me? Uh, we yeah, blessed. We can, we we can, can. hear you well. Go ahead. Give us your age and location, okay? Okay. So my age is um 35. And uh, <laughs> um, I'm from PA. I'm from Pittsburgh. All okay. right. PA in the building. We're going to spend some time in Pittsburgh. We have. Yeah, at the City of Bridges. Absolutely. Yes, it is. 446 of them. Incredible. Okay. Beautiful city. Beautiful city. What's your What's your question? So here's my question. I've been doing, I've been looking up some things about like childbirth and all that natural stuff, having your baby at home and stuff like that and how we should, you know, just being into the fact that I think that we should have birth standing up and like work, let gravity work with us. So but I also came across this thing where people are leaving their children, their babies attached to the umbilical cord in the placenta. It's called like a lotus birth. Lotus so birth. I wanted to mm-hmm. ask Queen, what is your take on that? On um, what are the benefits of that? And is that something that's really safe and something that we should actually consider um, doing? Great question. Yeah, it's the lotus birth is is important because you want all the nutrients because you attached. You were one. So when we start cutting, we separate the nutrition and the vital energy to boost and protect the baby's immune system. Right. So it's important to let let it dry up and and fall off naturally. And then not standing up to have a baby, but squatting and Mm -hmm. doing the support of a squat. Because when we lay down, we prolong the labor. And women could be in labor an extra 10 hours when they could be in labor maybe an hour or two. But to get to that point, because by the time that you do all the breathing and you're in a long labor because you may have been eating kind of very heavy, then you're not able to have the energy to even squat. All you can do is fall out and lay down. That's why you know, we end up going to the emergency and having a C-section because we're not healthy enough to even have a healthy home birth. So it's going to mm. take some really holistic, high-frequency living in order to have a healthy home birth and then have a lotus birth. Okay, well, that was my question. Thank yeah. you. Lady so, better. So start now. Start preparing. Y'all keep it up. And I just want to say, <laughs> I just love, I love the pod, and I just love watching y'all, y'all two men just walk through and transition. This is, this is really dope. This is really dope, especially you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I came a long way. I'm still going. I'm still Don't going. be talking to that girl no more. Don't be talking to that girl Ooh. no more. Leave her alone. Oh, I'm oh, done. Man. I'm done. Yeah, she, she, she cut off all the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's in recovery. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Man, I love that. I love that. The initiates, man, they 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 are fully they, invested. They hold us accountable. They care now. about you. They care about you. They yeah, do because you care about them. Circle. Man, it's look. It's it, it's been such a blessing to have you on here and to, you know, have you just educating the people like this. And the the most important thing that not only you have done, you know, meaning educating yourself and becoming the queen that you are, but you've also put other programs together for us to be able to get this healing that we have communicated here today so that's what i want to talk about now because first of all you didn't came i have never had somebody on this show first time in harley initiated history somebody came to the set and pulled four whole bottles 
out of their <laughs> out of their purse <laughs> and laid it here. So I know we got some things that we need to discuss about. So so Facts. where where do we start with some of the things that uh, you know the women need to be uh, taking care taking part of? Mm-hmm. Well, this is a little special. We're doing a special now. Twenty percent off code initiated. 20. Yep. Ooh, and that yay. link is in the bio. It's in the chat. And we're going to drop it in the comments. And I'm going to drop it for y'all right now. Yes. Okay. And, what's, and what is it? This is this is actually to get the women into alignment. And I went to what I did, Red Table Talk um, with Jada Pickett. There, a formula came into being when I was being interviewed. And that is the Wound Fruit Julep. And the Wound Fruit Julep, because when, I was, when they were preparing me to come on the show, they said, well, what, what are some of the foods that you use to heal? I said, well, for women's wombs, it's to boost up their blood and to heal them emotionally. Blueberries, raspberries, cranberries, blackberries. And you do those berries, they build and purify the blood so they won't be angry black women. They'll be peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> need, need that. Listen, buy two of those. <laughs> so one of those is, is, is just that it's the wound fruit julep. And so you can just take a tablespoon of that and put that into your juice and get this vitality and this energy and this you oxidize your tissues and your cells. Another one is the rejuvenation clean. This is a this is a kit, so it works as a collective. This is a good start. Like her sister, she didn't know how, kind of where to start. This is a good starter's kit. So you have your rejuvenation clay, and it's rose pink clay. And where, wherever there's pain, the pain around the wound pain vaginally, you can get a cotton swab or a gauze and place it and it will help to pull the pain out. So maybe that next month that you have your menstrual flow because you're eating healthier, because this is not just you take a formula, you take a lifestyle. Right. So we send to you a wound care love lifestyle so you know this is the food I eat in the morning, this is the juice, this is my apples, these are my pears, these are my berries, this is, and then can live a flush and then lunch and dinner. These are, this is my salad, this is my steamed vegetables, this is my soup. So I lay out a regime for you so that you're using food as medicine, but you're also working with the formulations. And so from the clay to pull out pain, to the wound fruit julep to boost up the blood, mm. to have the nutritional formula, the super greens to help to repair the nervous system. Because you do have the women, we're hurting, and that's why we are fighting because we're hurting. And so once you can boost up that immune system and balance out the emotions, because our emotions need to be fed with whole foods, these are supplements to help to support women. Mm-hmm. Incredible, incredible. So, and, and they that whole package, you have that whole package available for them to go about. This whole package is 20% for them, off. The 20% off, and they get, they get a, a guide so they'll know, okay, this is how I need to live in order to, to be sustainable and to be well. Not, womb is not just in the physical. The womb is also in the mind. What we think, we create. The womb is mm. not just in the mind, it's in the heart. What we feel, we create. And the womb of the mind, the womb of the heart, creates the condition of our physical womb. So the one, woman is a, she's in alignment. All the mind, the heart, and her seat of creation, then what is she going to bring forth into this world? What is she going to birth? A new being, a new mind, a right mind, a whole life, a healthy mate, it's all coming. All those quests that the women want, they're actually inside of us. And so when we clean up, then we begin to create what's inside of us on the highest level. And we show out in our relationships. Wow. Incredible, incredible. And guys, just so you know, we're gonna do something very special for you guys as well. While we got the queen in the building, she actually brought this incredible book in here just for our initiates. So what we are going to do, ladies and gents, is we are actually going to allow you guys to receive uh, one of our lucky members to receive a signed copy from Queen of Four. So what I want you guys to do, if you got a badge next to your name, you already an initiate, just go ahead and send us an email and go ahead in the um, subject of the email, put sacred woman and put your shipping address in there too so we can know how to send it to you if you want to get it back to you. It just makes it very easy to get it to you. And we will go ahead and get you out one of these books. And you're going to email info at hardlyinitiated.com. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. It's a thick book, all right? So if you, if you listen, you got to be ready for some change well, no, to no, jump up in this. I don't want them to be intimidated by it because uh, you can look at it as a reference. You can actually okay. do a prayer, a meditation, and turn to the page. Just turn, just 
Turn to a page. Okay. Turn, Turn to, to a page. page. Turn but to a page. Go, go into meditation. Center yourself. What do you need? No, first you have to close the book. All right, let me close the book. <laughs> 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 right. What do you need that's going to help to lift you up and strengthen you? Now, whatever page you turn to, that's your message. Okay. Let's see where I go. Ah. Let me see. Oh, wow. Oh, look at the king and the queen. That's what this is. Okay, what gateway is this? Chapter 11. Oh, that is wonderful. Because that's where you started when you spoke to me. Second man, second man is the healer. You are on your healing quest. You're eating healthy. You're, you're exactly where you're supposed. <laughs> you're exactly. I am on my healing quest. You, are, you know, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. That is how you started up before the show. You started talking about that you're on this healing, cleansing lifestyle, and you open right to second man. So you are right and exact. Ah. Yes, I like that. I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna lie. I, 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 I ain't read my copy like I should too. So I'm, I'm gonna crack that part open. I'm gonna read it is with y'all. This, right? this right here, this took work. Yeah, it took it work. is. This is it's work. very detailed, guys. This is not. This is not play play. She put. You talking about four all all the years of research to get this? This is not play play. This is the real deal. So I'm very excited for you guys to be able to get this together. And, you know, to be able to, you know, get this information. So we're very excited. Go ahead and send it again to Info Harley Initiated. We got that there for you, um, that product for you. And I think we got a couple super chats. We yeah, before we, get up. we got a couple super chats. Then I want to bring on Folky and Ashley be in the back. So shout out to Michaela for gifting another membership. And that's just, guys, if you don't know what's happening is you got current members who are blessing non-members to join the Initiate mm. family. So that was big. Shout out to Andre Hatchett, the best show ever. Andre, we love you. He's he's the bros for sure. Facts. Shout out to Eugene Steele. There have been lots of people who have views of what male and female natures are. Queen, what are your views on male and female natures? Mm -hmm. hmm. It's called balance. We actually have both qualities in us, and we have to activate both qualities. The side of the masculine principle is one who builds... But women have that. They have to tap into the builder. They have to tap into the architect. They have to tap into the finance. That is a masculine quality. Mm. The feminine quality is the healer, the one who's compassionate, artistic, creative. Those two qualities, do we all need them? Yes, we need them. Yes, we need, absolutely. We need all of that. And that represented in the body is the left and right brain. When you bring the left and right hemisphere together, you have full power. If you only have male qualities and you're patriarchal, fortified to the fullest, then you're out of balance. It's your way or the highway. You're not flexible, right? Controlling. Right, okay. If you have feminine and too much feminine energy, then you yield to any and everything anyone tells you to do. But when you have them both, then you're in, both, you're in full power. So you can then, between the hours of four and six, rise up, and you ask any question in the universe, whatever it is. What should I do? What, where's my finance? Who is my mate? What should I do about my home? Whatever. Come through. Listen. Take a deep breath. That is in your feminine, yielding openness to hear the truth. I call that impeccable listening. I wrote a book on impeccable listening. Now, at the middle of the day, Austin Asar is most prevalent. That's when you're going to take the vision that you receive. You don't have a, you're not dreaming. I don't call it a dream. I call it a vision time. You wake up out of your rest with a vision. Once you hear the vision, then you must activate. It's called ask, listen, and then act. When you do that, that's when you can manifest one thing after the next, after the next, after the next. If you don't check in, then you're going to do things that you have to now go back down the rabbit hole and go try to find your way out of it. Uh -huh. So you have to be very intentional, very on, on point, but balancing out those two qualities. So, for example, during the... Uh, four and six hours, that's more feminine. You just tap, you're tapped into prayer and meditation. Mm. But in, in daytime, that's when the masculine part of you comes out, when you're going to womb fast or manifest what you heard from the feminine side of yourself. Mm. And that's the balance. That's oh, Yeah, man. that makes sense. That makes a so lot of sense. So you're in full power. 
We got to change the whole schedule. Because <laughs> first of all, most of us ain't even waking up at four to six. Right. Oh, you can't it, wake up because you're too, you, you know, you're having a food hangover. No, you know what? Mm-hmm. Your food hangover, your, your habits and your patterns Your sex all hangover. Toxic. Right. Ooh, you stay up late, no Lord. night routine, everything. It's a lot going on. And then spill your juices all over the place. I remember Ryan said, <laughs> and I remember Ryan, you said this too. And it's so true. Because Ryan was um this when you first was like insatiably waking up in the morning early yeah yeah. he was like if it seems like when you wake up real early in the morning it's like the it's like the wi-fi signal is just strong like you could just connect (laughs) way easier like everybody's it's everything is settled come on it's quiet yes and the connection is supernatural it's oh man it's it's the sweetest part of the morning It, it that's how i wrote the book and i don't really say i wrote i channeled it but I didn't do it by myself. It was 28 people. <laughs> you know, you have the doctor, a doctor examine the book to make sure I wasn't going to hurt anybody. Wow. It was the, the, the artist. Um, this artist was there before I got there. And he, they were looking for someone to write something that could relate to this level of art. Um, and so this, because this is not a person, this is actually nature. This is the sky in this being mm. and this hair. And this body is actually... Um, grass and trees and so this whole image actually is nature itself and we have to become nature because we are nature we are the elements inside of us so um it took many minds to bring this work together and that's why i have to be humble because i didn't do it by myself yeah you know it was a collective consciousness that it was a need i just said yes i just Submitted to the truth of what I had to do, which well must come there at some point. Yeah. And say, I'm going to submit to my divine purpose. And we're sometimes afraid of our purpose because it's so big, it's so huge. Mm-hmm. It's so, it's so magnificent. You can't even believe it that, that you have been brought in to do the work that you've done. But that's what is needed. We need to come to our highest self and come with our excellence because we are in need of your excellence we got any other super chats before we bring my man on yeah we got a couple of them shout out to tamika says how to heal my adult self if i can't remember much of my childhood oh well your your adult self is your childhood it's you know who you are now is a combination of when you was in your mama's womb to when you was a little child to when you was a teenager there are there's a line of energy like it's in the dna so you can just look at your family and know where you are. Some of our families have diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer. So just start healing where you are. If you have three or four issues, go on a 21. Spring is coming. It's time for a detox. Yep. <laughs> L- listen, <laughs> link know? in the description. And then you'll heal that. You'll heal yourself where you are, and then your, your memory will come back. Then you're going to remember the issues that you had as a teenager and then forgive yourself. You can go back to that little child and have more compassion for your inner child. So that means all parts of yourself is knitting. You're knitting. You're being repaired. You're being restored. So you feel whole. To feel whole, maybe you've never seen or felt what wholeness feels like. Wholeness is a, such a divine place. And then when you think a thought or say a word or do an action, it's going to, come, it's going to be relieved, received on the highest level. That's, that's what it does. You know, a lot of them, my mom told me that too, because mm. she said a lot of her memories, she just completely buried. Because when if, if yeah. you've had a, a past mm. that dark, just it hurts to, to, to think completely about it. protect yourself, your brain will literally Shut like de- delete or archive that memory yeah. just so you don't even have to face it anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think that does happen. I think, I, I don't, mm. we've never spoke about that, but that is a real thing where you could literally just not remember certain things for your own protection. But you're not protected because you're actually living out that childhood. Absolutely. And don't know why you keep attracting certain people who are abusive or who put you down because there's something. So you might have to go back to that seven. It takes courage, it takes time. So you know when you start to do your baths, your spiritual baths, do your prayers, your meditation, you'll be able, it will come to you in your vision, your dream, you say, oh, that's why I feel like I feel because I was yelled at and I was told I was small and I wasn't big, I wasn't good enough. As a five-year-old, shut up, sit down, don't touch, don't do this, don't think. Even some little children, uh, returning ancestors, they have, they have vision, they can see life, they can see through people, but someone will tell them, don't do that, don't say that. No, you don't see that happening. So we actually numb that little child out and turn them off. So it's, that's very deep that you, you would see that because 
we have to go as far back as we can. Sometimes we go back lifetimes. Mm. We remember who he was then. I'm not a slave. You think that's the end of it? We're just slaves? If you don't go back <laughs> some lifetimes, you'll be messed up. You <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, I got you on that. Let's, let's go ahead and finish out those uh, ch super chats. Yep. Shout out to Angeline for the super sticker. And shout out to all the queens for joining the Initiate family. Zalisi says, I love you, queen. You have helped me so much throughout my life. Shout out to mm -hmm. Zalisi. Thank you. Brown, he for sending over that super chat. And I got uh, one more from, from Janelle that I want to read. Okay. But let's bring on Folky real quick and then we'll end with Janelle. Let's do it. <laughs> Folky, what's up with you, brother? <laughs> oh, wait, you muted. I'm mute, mute, mute Folky. Unmute your joint. Turn it up a bit. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Oh, Good. Goodness. We can hear from the brothers. Bless, brother. Give us, your, give us your age and location, and we're going to go ahead and get into your question. I just want to say thank you for the platform. Um, and also, uh, I just want to say hello to everybody. Um, Greetings. Queen, how you doing? Well, Greetings thank to you. you. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to ask... Um, for males that are that that first have have daughters, want to have daughters, and just have um, women in their life, how can we help our first the youth and then help uh, you know the next generation of women? How can we as males help push that uh, or help help in any kind of, in any kind of way? If that makes any sense. Yeah, send, send your, the women folk to, to women like myself. There are other women that can help. Because when you send, then you're going back to our culture because the women have to be strengthened by mature elder women who know, who are wise women. And when they come back into the home in terms of really emotionally and psychologically, then you're going to be stronger. And then you, as, a, as the king man of the house, then you need to go with the brothers and start a brotherhood. You can start a brotherhood, you can start a sisterhood, and just start having times like every month come together with as a family of brothers and sisters, even in your own home, and then share, everyone bring a, a whole dish, bring a salad, you bring a soup, somebody else bring the juices, and you sit down and you talk about the issues that you're having in your family. And guess what, when you come out of that, somebody has answered something that you need information from. You have wisdom in you, I can see it. You have wisdom in you already. Get two or three brothers, get two or three sisters, and you all come together as a family, and you eat together, and you commune together, and you're gonna see healing in your family. And don't do it on occasions, do it once a month. Come together once a month, and you'll see a shift in the family. Thank you so much for that wisdom. I appreciate you, Sage. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, folks, th blessings to you, brother. You know, I, I think I got the question um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, too, I, uh, for a mother and her son. Mm -hmm. I was at the farmer's market. This was this was yesterday. This mm -hmm. was yesterday. I was at the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. And um, on the way in, you know, uh, uh, a young lady walks up to me. She's like, listen, I love your show. And um, we started having a conversation. It's always like that. The conversations mm -hmm. get really deep. But she was telling me about her son she raised as a single mom. And when he was about 22, came back from college, mm -hmm. he ended up, um, you know, they ended up getting into a, I guess you would call it an altercation where he, you know, was very aggressive with his mom. Mm -hmm. And he's a large guy. You know, she was saying, I think he was like six foot, two hundred, six three, two hundred fifty pounds, was a big guy. So she's like, hey, you know what? I can't do this. You know, mm -hmm. I can't continue to let you live in my household. So she ended up, you know, removing him from the household. And now it's eight years later where mm -hmm. their relationship is not as strong mm -hmm. as it used to be. Mm -hmm. But her thing, I think her biggest concern was, uh, you know, what does she do as a mom? Because mm -hmm. she feels like she's, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. he, he's a college graduate. She's he, no chimey. Right, right. She needs someone to speak in her in his behalf. It would be appropriate if you get an older woman and an older man, right in the family. It could be an uncle who's willing, an aunt who's willing, or a grandmother, and they sit together as a family and let her speak. And, but, but it has to be set up that they both want to talk to each other. They, do, mm. they miss each other. They don't want to have that estranged relationship because it's impacting choices. Right. Right? So if we, they can get help from friends, family, uh, and bring that circle back into the circle where we started out, because in that family, there's medicine in that family. And the fact that they're in the same room, when they come out, I can see it. When they come out of that, 
half an hour, hour, two hours. There'll be tears that will be shared. There'll be apologies. There'll be, I will never do that again. I didn't mean to do it. I was going through something and I had no control of myself. That communication door will open up when they can come together. Mm -hmm. I think that's great counsel yeah, and because I think it's a lot of mothers who yeah. have lost their sons still living. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not always because it was some toxic environment, you know, mm -hmm. just things beyond their control that could have mm -hmm. happened. So I think that's really, really a great mm -hmm. solution for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, you know, every day I have three adult children. I say, most high, thank you. I say in such thing that my daughter calls me, whatever she's going through, she'll call me. My son, my oldest son, he calls. He said, geez, mom, I'm just checking. How you doing? Supernova. And he calls in and checks in. And the young, but they're all in business with me. That's also I raised them to be in business because that's African culture. Mm. Yes. My daughter helped me with womb wellness, womb care work, and development of these products. Supernova helped me with the book. He's got the book, and he does hip-hop nation work. And then the youngest one, the Ali, he helps with manufacture the products. So I heal myself products. So they're all in the business. And if you, we have to have a legacy. You won't have to take on the responsibility of saying, I have a legacy. Call it. Even if you don't think you have it, call I have a legacy. Get up between four and six. You'll see it. <laughs> You'll see it. And then once you get to that, what your legacy is, what it is that you're going to build in your family, just start with one. Maybe one or two can work together. And then when they start making money, then the next one will, will come in. And that's how we build our economics. We do, we do it with families. That's the one way that we can begin to restore ourselves and our families. Yeah. Oh, man. The jewels. The gems. It's been a powerful night, y'all. If y'all are That's at soothing. this point in the episode and you feeling blessed, drop a blessed. It is just so beautiful to be able to sit down here mm -hmm. with one of my elders that can just educate me on just how to live life the right way. You were ready already. This was your destiny, you know? And so, you know, you, 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 that's why I said you survived. <laughs> you, you was a player. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you came up. I mean, you said, I want a family. Right. I want children. And do you know the men who hear you say that? You're healing them? And you, and you were able to allow your life to be out like this. That means that you have enough elevated medicine in you to be able to share your life. It's not try to hide it. Say, this is what it is. This is what I'm going through. And then, your, and then your community can now can feed into you. Oftentimes when we feel isolated, that's when we go through depressions, we go through bouts of mental suicide, we start eat drinking and eating things that are toxic and sexing with everybody because we're looking for something. We're looking for what you have created. And so that is real powerful. Mm. I'm sitting amongst power, I give thanks. Oh man. I receive that. Likewise. Yeah. I absolutely receive it. Mm -hmm. Guys, let me tell y'all something. Y'all better go ahead and take advantage of these amazing selection of products that uh, Queen Afua here has laid out with a very special discount for the initiates and the family on here tonight. And also, if y'all want to get that real deep work, that real deep work, we also got the Sacred Women Rites of Passage. You that they can also my be a mind. part We're of. We're doing telepathy at this point. <laughs> yes, I'm here. <laughs> because I'm telling you, if they, if they we've, been, we've been talking for two hours. If they hear, they might really want that deep yeah, work. Take, yeah. So mm -hmm. what does that look like? You know, and, and mm -hmm. how would they be a part of, you know, that which I would think is probably your most grand program that you offer for the ladies, correct? Yeah. Well, it, yes. Well, actually, for the women, we have the sacred women rites of passage. For the man, we have man heal thyself rites of passage. They begin the same time. Mm. And they go through 12 weeks of rites of passage. Those who are calling now, I'm doing 10 minute tune ups. Those who are going, who are interested, what I do, I do radionics and I can pick up on someone's energy field and I can see where they have a blockage. And once they shift that blockage, they start to open up. And just like you were going to go on a trip that's really meaningful, you prepare. You know where, how to get there. You know who you're supposed to meet. You know where you're going to stay. You know the food you're going to eat. You know what sites you're going to see. It's, just, it's that deep when you go through the rites of passage. You're going to go inside. That's going to be the journey. The journey is within. And you start to discover things that are miraculous discoveries, things that you don't need anymore, that don't serve you any further, that has been a, a hindrance. But then you also see the glory and the blessing in going deep enough. Mm -hmm. And that's where the joy 
and the unity of your spirit comes into play, and this rites of passage will give it to you. We have a supernatural gathering of the women, and they support each other on the highest level, or they learn how to support each other. And when you have women who are loving and supportive, the men will change in the household. The men will not be couch potatoes. The men will not be angry black men either. You know, the men will, and you know, when, when couples are together for a long time, the men, they find a way to have two different bedrooms. That's a death of relationship. Mm. When they start taking the journey, the men taking their healing journey, the women taking their healing journey, they can unify or they can end relationships that have devastated them and once and for all get to new you and the new relationships. So the rite of passage for those who are interested should um, give us a call and then queenofford.com and we'll put you in for a 10 minute tune up. I'll pick you up quickly, what your problems are, boom, 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 boom. Do this, do this, do that, stop doing that, boom, now you're ready. I want you to study this particular gateway. You say, well, well, then I'm going through some issues with my mother. Okay, look at gateway in my eye. You know, people are talking bad about me. Look at the gateway to Hootie. I'm having some rumors. Okay, go to the, so whatever your issues are, you'll get started. The preparation, you'll get started. So by the time you start the, at the end of March, Women's History Month, this now, then you already be in your alignment. So it starts now. First of all, I'm happy that you said that that sleeping in separate bedroom nonsense was dysfunctional because I ain't never, I never <laughs> thought that was healthy. I keep seeing people trying to rationalize. Mm. I keep seeing people trying to rationalize. No, it's okay. You know, he has his space. Yeah, I like my, my own space. space. I'm like, wait, <laughs> the relationship is over. <laughs> I agree with that facts. Thank you. The queen has spoken. Yeah. Pele right. sent up a super chat real late, but we, we got to show a little love. Do you have any advice for a night shift nurse of 19 years? I find it that I have difficulty concentrating and following mm. through with tasks. What mm. would you suggest? That's the graveyard shift. I can stop right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 19 years of that you, you, you talk, it's time for graduation my beloved time for graduation <laughs> it's time for graduation I know you make a little bit more money but I think you stored enough money to have a balanced life because once you shift that around the level of power and energy and majesty is going to come into your life is going to be extremely opposite of what you're getting because you're walking around tired all the time I want. I got a buddy right now who works like a dog. He works for his corporation. He's mm -hmm. got to be there to start a meeting at 7 a.m. He gets home probably around 7.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, the first thing you need to do is get you a job with different hours because mm -hmm. you can't do nothing for yourself if those yeah. are and kind of hours you work. Because you missed the drive. Oh, yeah. he's and driving. he's driving 40 okay. minutes to 50 minutes to work and back. Okay. It's just like your, your whole entire lifestyle is consumed. So he's suffering. Exactly. He's suffering. And what is his, the quality of life? What is his quality? I want him to reflect on the quality of life. When you don't give yourself that much energy, that much joy, that much peace, because you're not having that much peace in your life. So it ain't it's something that, to reflect that, and mm -hmm. to make those necessary changes. So you have longevity, you know, definitely. 100%, y'all. First of all, Queen of Four, thank you so much for yes. coming up on here. Blessing the platform. And blessing Hardly Initiated and the audience. I want to just say this. I'm in Atlanta. You know, that's a big deal for me because I've been in New York City for 50, oh, about 50 years. Wow. But I'm in Atlanta. I've opened up the Queen's Holistic Retreat. Wow. 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 For women and men. And you come there, and I cater to you in such a way, in three days you get a full life. Whatever the issues are, I, we do a three-day breakthrough. You come into the Soul Sweat Spa and you go through hot room inversion, the healing baths, the tonics, the juices. We have, I take you also into a dome, um, a lotus dome, where you do your meditation, your activation, and you get a chance to write your new life. Because some of us are living in somebody else's life. Uh -huh. Right? And that's a problem. So once you start to get connected, plugged into you, you say, oh, that's not what I really want to do. What am I doing that? What am I, why am I doing that? And these three days help you to get to yourself and really transform. And some may not come for three-day intensive, maybe a bit much. Others may come for a two-hour intensive, and that's all they need to get started. Wow. To re realign, to open up, and be fortified. And, you know, I'm the queen, and, of course, I'm going to take good care of you. So come. Trusted. <laughs> Say less. The queen is trusted. Of course. Oh, the approved. Queen the queen is trusted. Dope. <laughs> Blessed to have you here in Atlanta. <laughs> Welcome to the city. We are absolutely Thank glad you. to have you. Thank and you. we are glad that you guys stayed in here and kicked it with us this long wow. in this episode here. 
We two hours and 17 minutes in, and we loving every single minute of it, guys. I want to let you know now, do not forget the Harley and Love decks are still available here in the description below. So you guys need to go ahead and get your decks as soon as possible. Wow. What I also want to let you know, this Wednesday, y'all know we doing this every Monday, Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Mm. And y'all have been asking so much for this strong spirit to be here, pun intended, because Dr. Spirit is going to be on the show this upcoming Wednesday at 8 p.m. All right? So to make sure y'all hear this Wednesday because we're going to have Dr. Spirit here and we are doing live marriage counseling. Yeah. It's about to go deep, y'all. We've never done this before. And we're about to bring y'all something that y'all have never seen on the Harlan Initiated platform and probably nowhere else. Ever. And it's going to be absolutely incredible. And we had to get somebody that we can trust with a situation as sensitive and as deep as it's going to be. So y'all know we brought Dr. Spirit in. So it's going to be powerful. But listen, guys, I need your subscription to the platform. I'm talking about the free one. Just hit that subscribe button. Help us grow. Help us expand. That's one of the biggest ways that everybody watching right now can just in the lightest and most free way help us grow. Our platform is just hit subscribe. But we love you guys. We appreciate you. We don't take your viewership for granted. And it's going to keep getting better. And y'all already know how we do it. Hardly initiated, we are out.